Yeah, we're about to go live. Right. Oh, you ain't slow that. Act like you got them skate. Act like you got them skate. What's up, what's up, what's up, Kane Nation? Talk to me. Let me know everything looks good, sounds good. We're going to get this thing rocking and rolling. I already got 38 people just getting started, so we're going to let a few more people jump on in this thing. The producer's already in the building with a thumbs up, so I know everything looks good and everything sounds good. Let's make this thing happen. Shad in the building. What's going on with you? 863 Kane, talk to me. Uh Uh-oh. Springtime, summertime, you know what come up in summertime, A63. Huh? That fantasy league. You better get ready for it, boy. You better start doing your homework. Make it happen. Brother Jay Blaze in the building. Yes, sir. Coach Hayes football and the team. That's right. If you do want to be a part of the team, all you got to do is hit that subscribe button. As you see, I had to turn on the uh, subscribers only just because it keeps the uh, weirdos out, if you know what I mean, all those bots and those weird sites and stuff. Y'all go do that on your own time, if you know what I mean. But anyhow, uh, long story short, let's go ahead and get into this thing as people pile on in here. Super excited. It seemed like it was going to be a long time before spring ball came around. And it's here. It started yesterday on March 4th. All right. So they had their very first practice. I believe they had a practice today as well. Uh, I have to be very honest. I've been super busy trying to take care of some things. Uh, and speaking of those things is I was working a deal with Alex Tabio, our sponsor for the show has been a sponsor for a long time. So anything you got to do at home financing, please check him out. Let me tell you something. What I just did, it was a lot of work, but it was painless. It was seamless. He did everything that needed to be done. He got great deals for me and we made it happen. So big shout out to Alex Tabio, a big time, uh, fan of this show and a big-time Miami Hurricane fan from Pioneer Mortgage Funding. All his information is in the description, so make sure you check him out for all of your home financing needs, whether you are first hometown buyer, VA loans, whatever the case may be, refinancing, all of that kind of stuff. I only had one beef with Alex. I had to be honest. I got one beef, and Alex, if you're listening, I'm sorry I had to put this out here. There's one thing that he did not do. He could not predict that the Miami Hurricanes will win a national championship in 2023. That's my only beef with them. That's my only beef. So other than that, when it comes to home financing, he is a national championship. But when it comes to predicting that the Canes are going to win one, he's like, Coach, I can't do that. I can't put that prediction out there. So that's my only beef I got with <laughs> That's the only beef I got with them. But anyway, uh, let, let's make this thing happen, man. Oh, right here. I believe I was on the road. I was coming back from Miami. I hope this is the gentleman. I pulled over to a pilot gas station and a gentleman stopped me in the store. I hope, hopefully this is him. And if it is, give me a thumbs up, Joel. I pulled over at the pilot gas station, trying to get some gas. And the gentleman stopped me as I'm walking through the door. He said, Hey, you the guy on TV, right? With the hurricanes. And I'm like, yeah, man. So we chopped it up a little bit. We talked a little bit about DVD and so forth. So big shout out to you, Joel McBride. If that is you, like I said, give me a thumbs up. If that's the case, man, but big shout out to you, man. Thank you so much for what you do. That's right. Joe McBride from, I've pulled over in Fort Pierce over there at the pilot gas station, man. He stopped me. So, Hey man, coach Hayes and and the team is going statewide, worldwide, global. We got people calling in from all over the place. So I appreciate you, Joe, man, for even stopping saying what's up, man. Thank you so much. All right, 125 in the building. I'm not going to belabor this point. Let's go ahead and get into this thing. That was a very interesting comment, the very first one on the channel. Martin Quinn says, after the yesterday's practice, Mario looked like a new refreshed man while speaking at the press conference. That gives me some hope for the new season. I have to say that. One thing about coaches, when you get back to actually getting on the grass, it is refreshing. It is new. It is um, rejuvenating, right? Because you get a chance to actually do what you do as coach. You know, yeah, recruiting, all of that is part of it. You know, talking to parents, doing the, uh, you know, the, the players come on campus and all of that. That's great. But it's nothing like 
get a chance to get out there and teach these guys. So I guarantee he is refreshed. Everybody refreshed because you're just like we are. We have been waiting for this moment. We've been waiting for spring practice. We want to see what we have on this, this current roster. And so do coaches. Coaches want to know what they got. They want to finally get a chance to really uh, see what their investment is all about, right? Because it is an investment. They spend numerous of hours, bunch of money recruiting these guys. And you finally get them on campus. Let's see what it's all about. Let's see what the all of the, the meetings and stuff. Now let's see what it does on the grass. Because when you're in those classrooms, that's a part of it. And that's cool to get on that board and talk football. But at the end of the day, I've never seen anyone win a national championship by talking football. You got to actually play this deal. And so I say that I say all that to say this is that I could definitely see that and I definitely understand. So if everybody understands that, as you saw in the thumbnail. Uh, all right. Yeah. Joe McBride. Yes. Appreciate it. Uh, so anyway, Joe. Uh, um, so as you see this deal and you see what's going on, we got some very late hires or some late movement going in. Shout out to Miami Flow who said that. Miami Flow said it was going to be some movement in this deal. And, and late when he came on and did the Crush Groove battle. And shout out to everybody that watched that as well. That was fun. Uh, people have been getting on me about the judging. So we may change that up. We may not have another Crush Groove episode till after spring ball. Uh, just to get some time, let it, let it fester a little bit. But anyhow, so yeah, we may be doing that. So anyhow, uh, we get into spring practice. Kevin Beard was hired as the wide receiver coach, and Jason Taylor, where well, Rod Wright moved on, I believe, to the to the Houston Texans, and Jason Taylor slid in. There's been a big push, including myself, was pushing for DVD to get an opportunity. That necessarily didn't happen. Hopefully, it happens next year with some movement. But if it doesn't, I understand. We'll talk about that later. If you want to call in to talk about that, we can do that as well. But anyway, let's talk about this. Uh, I was talking to Streeter the other day because they get an opportunity to go out to practice. Big shout out to Rich. He's one of the villains. He had an opportunity to go out and uh, be part of the media. He was credentialed yesterday. So give, if you see Rich on this show, man, give him a big shout out, man. My man was out there on the sidelines making it happen as a villain. So big shout out to him. But uh, anyway, uh, as I was talking to Street, I was I wanted to kind of get an understanding of how they set up the field because I know they only allow the press to go to certain areas. And I know that Coach Crystal Ball is an offensive line coach. You hold blocking scheme, and blocking schemes are very big. You don't want to kind of put that out there. I know people are filming. They have their cameras. You know, a nine rod is a nine rod. A slant is a slant, whatever. It's not that big of a deal. But when you start talking schematically from blocking you do want to kind of hide that from the press simply because you don't want that video footage to get out because there's audio tied to it. Your opponent, trust me, we used to do it. Your opponent will go back and watch that film to kind of hear what the checks are and so forth and so on. So you don't really want to put that out there. So he said that usually the linemen, the trenches are about a hundred yards away. Unless you got one of those moon lenses out that deal, you probably won't get any footage. You definitely won't get any audio. Uh, unless you, you know, they got those real expensive lenses. You see me about this big or whatever the case may be. So I said all that to say, we can't really determine Jason Taylor's impact as of right now. I'm not saying it's not good. I believe it's going to be great. But so far as seeing it in contrast to like we saw Kevin Beard, there's a lot of footage of Kevin Beard going through the drills, telling him what to do, where to put the foot on the bag, how to break this, how to step on the uh, defender's toes. All of that kind of stuff is great. All of that kind of stuff is exactly what you want to see out of wide receiver coach. And I was looking at some of the uh, press conferences with some of the players, and they're super excited offensively and defensively. I watch Cam Kitchen. I watch Jalen Rivers. I watch Wesley the Saint. Uh, they'll talk about it, and they're all fired up. You know, when there's a new opportunity out there, everybody gets fired up about these opportunities. And I want to see how this translates. Um, here's what I, what I know. And I'll talk about spring practice and I'll talk about today how kind of the first one goes. The very first install, I'm sorry, the very first practice is really about a lot of installs, especially when you have this much turnover on the coaching side. So to say that we have, I want to say about six coaches that, that are new. Let me see, Kevin Beard. You still have Jason Taylor, both coordinators, linebacker coach, who else? Am I missing anybody? That's five. Um, 
think there's one more person, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, the running back coach, Tim Harris. Oh, man, I can't give a shout-out to my man, Tim. And Tim Harris is the running back coach. So that's six of your 10 coaches that are new. So that's 60% of your coaching staff that is brand new. Here's what happens in day one and first practice is you're going over installs, learning how to practice, where to be, where to be on the field. Because you have to remember, these expectations are new. Even though the players may be old, the coaches are new. Therefore, expectations are new. And so with all that being said, that's where you're going to see a lot of that. You're going to see a lot of real uh, fundamental talk. You're going to see a lot of technique talk when it comes to these spring practices. And it will be pretty much vanilla. So I'll say all that. Um, let me see here. People that are talking. There you go. Big shout out right there to Terrell Walden's mom in the building. Candace Bloom, she's in the building. I got to give you a call anyway. Uh, but shout out to her as well. He's going to do big things at the U as well. Uh, super excited for him. And there's been some number changes. I don't know who else has changed number, but Camp Kitchen changed his number back to five. He was talking about how he's had that number since Optimus or Pee Wee, whatever y'all call it now. My day, we're a little older, so we called it Optimus. But, uh, you know, he's excited to have that number and so forth and so on. So he's super excited uh, about the number change. He really likes it, feels better. You know, at the end of the day, it's a jersey with a number on it, but players do feel better with what they have and how they feel about it. So that's super exciting. I know we have some injury list. I know they said Leonard Taylor would not be participating this spring. Uh, I'm not sure why. Probably due to injury and maybe have had some surgery. Um, let me think who else is not going to participate. Come on, guys. Help me out. Coach been on the road making it happen. Anybody else that's not participating in spring, uh, shout out to Coop. I was watching his show, and he he was listed down. It was three guys he said uh, – that were, was not going to practice this spring. Uh, didn't really say why, but just said they were. Oh, Trevante Citizen, uh, the running back, he said. And it was one more guy. Who was it? Chase Smith still not practicing, guys? Hold up, Travis. Hold up, Travis. You said Chase not practicing? Come on, man. My man Chase got to get on the field. Elijah Arroyo. Oh, Zion Nelson. Come on. I don't know what kind of injury Zion Nelson had, but it might have been major for him still to be out. Uh, like I say, pretty much was out all last season and everything else. James Williams not practicing either. God, y'all y'all breaking some news up in this joint. Chase Arroyo and Citizen. Thank you, LP. Zion, Leonard Taylor, James Williams. Oh, James Williams back to number nine. Okay. All right. I'm liking it. <coughs> Excuse me. Apologize. I must be allergic to that bull crap. I think it's Seminole up in here somewhere. I think it's a Seminole in the chat. Made me allergic. Uh, but anyway, so that's what we got going on right now. Let's open up this phone line. Let's talk about it. Uh, the number has changed. You have a queue to go through if you're new to it. 862-799-9956. You will come on and tell you be muted. I'll bring you on. I will call out the last four digits of your phone number to let you know I'm coming to you. All right. If the chat is full, I will go ahead and launch the uh, the timer. I'll put the timer up there on the deal. And once you hear the, that means kind of wrap it up in this deal. If you go too far, I have to hit you with the. All right. I mean, I'm going to land your plane for you with that being said. All right. So we got some calls coming in right now. Also, really quick, uh, I do want to say this. Um, Coach got a tip jar right here. So when you donate the super chat or whatever the case may be, it drops some coins in there for your boy. Just kind of something kind of cool. I thought I saw we could make it happen. 243 people in the building. Also, if you donate on Cash App, I will definitely bring you in. I will block out your government name and I will go in and read that in there as well. So let's go in and talk about this. Speaking of the devil, we got my man in the building, brother Jay Blaze. Talk to me. What's going on, coach? I'm good. I'm good. Let me know everybody can hear him with a thumbs up. Talk to me, Blaze. What's your thoughts? 252 in the building. Man, I'm looking forward to this, uh, the way the tempo and how they uh, really pay attention to detail with the young guys since some of the veterans, older guys, I would say, is not going to participate in spring practice. But, you know, uh, the quarterback, especially the, the Q 
key positions, you know. Um, technique can't be beat, you know. I'm, I'm looking for them to, you know, critique that. And, you know, over time, I, I know it's going to be a learning curve, so it's going to take time for them to gel and to come together, even as a coaching staff. So I, I want to see uh, how Mario Cristobal this year can bring together the coaching staff and, and, and get these position coaches, get – get the players to do on the football field, perform on the football field what they want to do in practice. You know, it's all about that coaching, that development. No, you're hundred percent right. You're you're hundred percent right. And we got to start getting the chemistry going, right? This is kind of back to what I was saying. I don't want to be that guy. Who's the Debbie Downer guy, this guy right here, but this is what happens. And again, this is not a knock. I'm just talking about timetables. So if you see, uh, Kevin Beard comes in a little bit late. He didn't have a lot of time to get on the board with the guys. So he's got to kind of double time his coaching on the field. You understand what I'm saying? He's got to kind of double time. He didn't have a chance to say, hey, look, we want to run this on the board and we want to do this. He's coming in late. But one thing I love about it, he jumped straight in. This is his second stint too. You know what I mean? Of course, everybody knows he played here uh, for the Miami Hurricanes. But I love his energy. I love what he's bringing and so forth and so on. Mm-hmm. You uh, mentioned uh, uh, them going over the basics, like the slant, you know, all, all the basic routes. I'm sure, I'm sure Kevin Bibb was going over that. But, you know, him getting on the same page with uh, Coach Dawson, that, that's going to be real key, too, because actually understanding the depth of the route, understanding the concept and what he, he really wants them, you know, to teach, you know, from from – from position coach to coordinator, that that got to be, you know, on the same page. No, you're 100 percent right. Sure as Kevin, Kevin Beard, a veteran, I'm sure he he can step in real quick because he's been in this situation before. No, yeah, you're 100 percent right. Right, like you know, a slant is a slant is a slant, but there are certain ways people want you to run it. There are certain timing aspects of it. Talking about this air raid system and so forth, it'd be interesting to find out how they work that. Uh, and I'll just kind of flip right. this over here since you're the only call on right now. We don't have anybody in the queue. Mm-hmm. I-, I would like to say mm-hmm. this. Um, what are your thoughts on what you've been hearing about the quarterback? I have been hearing a lot about Emory Williams. Uh, somebody just put up here. Hold on if I can find it right here. Right here. Wickweed, uh, 50-50, says he heard Emory look, look the best out there better than TVD. Uh, that's interesting, man. Uh so what what are your thoughts? Have you been hearing the it, same thing? Anything different? Uh yeah, I heard that Emory Wells was looking real good, you know. And actually, you know, had they had him right beside uh Ja'Cory Brown, you know, and, and you know, coming right behind, you know, his reps and Ja'Cory is right there. But um I know they're not gonna push T V D because he's like he said in the uh, press conference that he was about ninety two, ninety five percent. So they not going to really push TVD that much. So the younger guys probably get a lot of reps. And by them getting a lot of reps, I really will want, want them to, again, pay attention to detail. And Coach Dawson, since he's coaching the quarterback, you know, he's, he's you know, as far as mechanics, you know, going over the fundamentals, those things I want to see. And then the up-tempo and getting on the same page with the receivers. That That is what I want to see, you know. Um, but they, I, like, like I said, I heard that Emory Williams was looking real good. He was sharp, you could, especially in the uh, one-on-one drills, you know, going throwing the ball into the net, uh, different things like that. That's what I heard that he was sharp with. Right. And so, like I say, it would be very interesting. You know, I, I, again, this was one practice. I believe they had one today. I'm not up on it. So y'all got to forgive me, man. Coach being out there working. Uh, but it, like I said, there's a total of uh, 15 practices in the spring, if I'm not mistaken. And I believe one yeah, of those, it, one it, of those it, include uh, the spring spring game that'll be on April 14th. And uh, coach will be in the building for that as well. Uh, so it'll be, like I said, it'd be super exciting to find out exactly what's going to happen. Um, I do think, I know that TVD said he's 92%. And again, I don't know what the other 8% is. Is it, does it ting a little bit when he throws or what? But I have to say this, in order for him to be successful in this system, he has to be a part of the practices. He has to know where to throw the ball, the timing, understanding how to read the field. Um, yeah, I can stand right next to Emory or Ja'Curry Brown and look at it.
but it's still not the same if you when you actually throw in the ball because you got to get that rhythm with those guys. You got to get that chemistry. You know, especially in this kind of offense, it's all about chemistry. Right. I, I believe the number one quarterback, too, also is a mental thing, uh, understanding, too, because he has to get that playbook down, you know, understanding the concepts of the playbook. So, you know, it, that that's also the mental stress on that first quarterback. Uh, TVD is going to be uh, – it's called the, the number one quarterback. It, it, it's going to be – he's going to have to get on his horse and, and really learn that playbook quickly, you know. So that that's – that's that's another reason probably why they you know he probably in that film room he probably in that playbook diving deep in you know so. yeah and of course you know coach you you know coach uh, uh, Dawson is all over that from a mental aspect you got to get the ball around you got to get the time to right they got to know how to make these checks trust me all of that stuff has been installed from a mental aspect now it's time to say okay. Okay, so for example, Blaze, I just kind of go through this. They'll probably throw in the first four installs, right? Meaning, mm-hmm. from a mental aspect, what they've done in the meeting room. The second is now they're going to go back to install one yesterday, install two today, and it goes pretty fast. And they want to see how fast these guys can pick up on this this uh, this information from the board to the to the to the field. In that case. Um, let me go and put this time on. Okay, do they do that classroom coach? I know you got the experience in that. Do they they go from the classroom and to the, the practice field? Well, yeah, they'll talk Is about it. Yeah, they'll talk about it so far, so far as like they'll go in, but I'm talking about before they even started this, where the coaches come in, they meet with them, go over, hey, here's install one, two, three, four, five, whatever. And they pretty much have it laid out okay. for the 15 practices. Uh, but again, they don't they don't do the whole thing. They may do the first four and then they'll alter it as they go. Uh, and so forth and so on. But now you have to gauge how much are they picking up? Is it something that's difficult? Scrap it. Uh, you know, I remember looking at Chip Kelly. I'm coming to you, Carla, 1801 in about a minute and a half. Um, but I remember wa- watching Chip Kelly at a conference and he was talking about scrapping plays. You know, when plays don't mm-hmm. work and it doesn't work, I may want to run that play as bad as I want to run it. It doesn't matter if my players can't perform and execute. So I got to scrap it. I wonder how how far uh, out do they uh, when they put those pads on? Um, how many practices they is not pads, and then how long does it take for them to get in pads right before? They, they might be in the next training. the next one or two practices should be pads. I'm not sure. I don't know the exact schedule, so it should be the next. Usually, it's about three days to get acclimated to all the equipment and stuff. They, that's a a grace period. But I want to say, like at least by mm-hmm. practice four, they should be in at least shells and stuff. Right, your helmets and shoulder pads, right? Correct, correct. Oh, yeah. or just full pads. No, that well, shells is helmet, shoulder pad, and then full pads will be later on. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. All right. So it'll be super interesting, man. But let me go ahead and uh, land your plane. I got eighteen oh one on the line. I want to talk to him, guys. I've been out the loop. Educate me. Call in. Let me know what you guys are hearing, what you're seeing, <laughs> and uh, I, I have been. I've been so busy, man. Uh, so it, it's been it's been great. I appreciate it, Coach A. Thank you for giving me this this time to speak. Uh, hey, man, keep the pushing forward. Do your thing. Yes, sir. Right appreciate it. <laughs> gotcha, baby. Appreciate you as always, Blaze. Thank you so much, man. All right, Coach A. Thanks. Yes, sir. I'm coming to 1801 right now. Let me get this dono uh, up and out the way so we can talk to him. Right here, we got five dollars from uh Dale in the building, man. Appreciate the five dollars on Cash App. Thank you so much for sending that in there. Uh for DB from Seminola. All right, I hear you. I like it. DB from Seminola in the building. All right, coming to 1801 right now. Carla, talk to us. Give us your name. Where you calling from? What's happening, Coach John? Carla Hayes, this your boy Daryl Page, man. Calling from Palaka, my boy. Daryl Page, what's up? I always see you in the chat, boy. Glad to hear your voice. What's up? What's happening? How you doing, man? Shoot, I'm just calling to talk about um some of these number changes, man. I'm hurt. <laughs> the numbers bother you that much, I don't man? Wait, <laughs> I don't wait four months for a Cam Kitchen jersey. I got two of them now, and this man will change back to five. Oh, Lord. 
<laughs> I was not listen with Daryl. I now I know why you hurt. My bad. I see why you hurt now. But guess what? <laughs> One thing you do have is the first All American jersey. Then how about that? How about that? Look at it That's that way. Bad. That's a bad. I can look at it that way. Yes, sir. Now I got to try to get to the game, you know, in the rocket. You got to make it happen, dog. You got to get down there, man. Hey, this is a, get your runner car, fly down there, whatever. Throw your thumb up here. Most definitely, my. Most definitely, but um, I, 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 I hopefully we get some um some good good installs in right now, man. Hopefully they understand everything that they're trying to install right now in the spring. Honestly, you feel me? Everybody get you feel me adapted to the change that's going on. Yeah, it, it's going to be big, Daryl. Like I say, the biggest part is the teaching, right? The development comes yeah. over time. You, I don't think you'll see a lot of development in 15 practices, but what you will be able to see is the teaching in 15 practices. Um, do players know where to be? Like I said, this is pretty much a coaching overhaul. I mean, when 60% of your coaches turn over after one year and they are coordinators, right? Two of Two of those six are coordinators. Well, guess what that means, bro? The whole philosophy has changed, right? Even if you could be running the same offense, the same defense, but the philosophy, the verbiage, the terminology has now changed. So that's a big deal. It's not like, okay, just the running back coach changed, and then we bring in Tim Harris. Yeah, you almost know. everybody changed. There's a whole new language that they got to learn, but they're probably going to take baby steps right now and slowly implement little small stuff. But hopefully yeah. we see some interesting stuff in the spring game, though, at least. I don't want to I want to see some deep balls, like you say, boss, man. Well, Daryl, Kevin Beard say we going deep. Now, if I get to that spring game and we don't go deep, let me tell you something. I might run on the middle of the field, boy, and be like, wait a minute. I might blow a whistle and be like, wait a minute. That ain't what you just promised me. And it's great. I heard um Ja'Kar Brown, the second fastest on the team. That's wild. The boy can ride, dog. He can ride. That young man can get it, boy. He can get it. So, like I say, I, I'm super excited to see these guys out here. And think about it. It's your quarterback, right? What he ran a 4-4, four, four, something like that. Um, and that can be deadly once that field opened up. And and speed like that, from a defensive perspective, ooh-wee, you got to account for that guy. You understand? Yeah, and I heard these guys got Gus Miles. What ain't his name? Gus Miles on that coach for Auburn. I heard they got ties from him. Was he there when they had that um Marshall guy, number fourteen, that when they went to the national championship? But I think they lost to Florida State. Gus well, Miles on championship. So say that again now. Yeah, Gus Miles on the um offensive scheme wasn't um that scheme used. Around the time Auburn went to the BCS championship against Florida State. Oh uh, yeah, they had some air raid in there. Uh, I, I'm I'm gonna be interested, in, and yeah, to your point, I'll be interested to see how this running game meshes in. I, w- I really want to see. Um, I really am interested to see how this is going to work. Like I'm really interested to see how it's going to mesh the air raid and everybody's been talking about uh, the different run concepts. Like I said on our Crush Groove episode. You know, Groove was kind of saying, hey, what he ran at Houston can work here. And then uh, Flo was kind of saying, eh, I, I, I want to see some gap scheme stuff, some pulling guards and so forth and so on. So I was interested to find out because everybody knows Mario Cristobal keeps stuff tight to the vest. So I'd be very interested to find out uh, how this is going to look, man. Hey, I feel like we're going to be able to run the ball real easily, honestly. And plus, Every place he went to, he got statistical stats to prove that he can run the ball, you feel me, in some sort of fashion. Mm-hmm. Now, last year, you know, the quarterback had to do majority of the work because his main guy at the running back position was hurt. But even still, the back of the running back had a decent yardage. And I know our running back in Miami can do something. As long as our O-line be on point, we'll be okay. Nah, definitely, man. Well, I got a caller calling in right now, uh, 7021. So we got two minutes. We're going to throw that up there, man. Let's get this thing rocking. Well, what's your thoughts like this? What's your thoughts on uh, Jason Taylor right now taking over the reign at the, the defensive end? I love, I love that, honestly. We got a Hall of Famer at their coaching, at his position that he played. 
He can walk in any home and use the same thing like Dion and say, hey, I played this position. I bit, put up big numbers at the position. I can get you there. I can teach you how to be there. I can show you the way. I can guide you. Just trust in me and I'll take you there. And it ain't too many guys that's recruiting can say that. He don't did it at every level. So that I feel like that's real good for that. All right, let me I ask just you a wish, question. You know, oh, I'm sorry. Get this... somebody to get DVD on the stadium. Right, I'm Go sorry. Ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. I want to ask you this one question. What's more important, a guy that can recruit or a guy that can coach? Just asking. A guy that can coach. Why is that? Because then you can develop whatever come in there. Okay. That's fair. The reason I ask, because we, we do put a lot of emphasis on recruiting, and most guys will say one or the other. They'll either say, hey, this guy can recruit, but they won't talk about his coaching acumen, or they be like, "Man, this guy can really coach, but he's not that good at recruiting." Is it? Is it? Is do you think it's hard for coaches to get both to be good at both? Um, no, it's not hard because Nick Saban is proof of that. He can do both. He can recruit and coach. That's fair. That's fair. I just ask. I just pose a question because I hear it all the time, and uh, you know, like I always ask this question. People talk about the Hall of Famer. But then we're looking at the people that's winning the national championship. Do they have any Hall of Famers on their on their roster? No, but honestly, it's getting bigger that Hall of Fame. There's a lot more Hall of Famers getting involved in coaching these days, it seems like. Yeah, sure enough, man. I'm just, I'm just, a lot. just teasing, but go ahead. Mm-hmm. Nah, you good. My plane no landed, boss man. Everything <laughs> gravy. But shout out to your show, boss man. Love your show, Coach Hayes. Keep doing your thing. Keep doing it, big. We're going to rock out all the way. Yes, sir, man. I really appreciate you, man. Thanks a lot, Daryl, for calling in, man. Yes, sir. It's all about the you. All about the you, baby. All right, man. We're going to get my. We're gonna get the next call in. Let me give a quick love to that new subscriber that just popped in on the building. Thank you for subscribing, Alan JR3CO. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. As you notice, you dropped a little subscribe coin right there in my little jaw. But y'all look sad, y'all. Help help your boy out. We're we, we looking sad. Y'all going to subscribe. Fill that thing up. Your super chats go in there. Everything else going. I got one look. Man, that's one little shot. Let me go and take it. Ah, thank you so much. All right, let me go to get on the 7021. Get ready to come on to the line and talk to us. All right, call or talk to What's us. Give us your name. Thing? Where you calling from? Uh, this is Lakers fan from uh, Birmingham, Alabama. Let me go and get this out of the oh. way now. Hold up. All right. I got one in right now. Before you leave, I'm going to give you another one. Go ahead. I'm listening. Uh, first of all, I just want to say I love the Jason Taylor hire. Um, just when I saw it come across my screen, I feel like Jason Taylor, he's one of those coaches. I feel like um, in a couple of years, he could be, if you guys do good, he could be looking at NFL jobs, you know, um, because I do think like, um, he would have a he would have a lot of respect, and I don't know if he can necessarily coach, but I mean, if he can coach, that'll be that's going to be huge for him. And you guys just made a really good hire. Um, also, there's been a lot of news going around in the ACC about Florida State, and uh, I think Clemson possibly leaving. I know there's been a lot of news about Florida State possibly leaving. Um, just just real quick, what do you, how how do you feel as a, as a fan of a team that's in the ACC? Do you feel like and and I know because Miami probably will rise to the cream of the crop, you know, if 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 uh, Florida State and Clemson leave for sure, um, definitely more more likely than they do have a chance now, um, and they still have a good chance now. Um, mm-hmm. How do you feel as a fan of a team in the ACC about them leaving? Do you feel like oh this is bad for our conference, or do you feel like this is good, or do you feel like hey I want my team to kind of follow them because I know Miami can probably follow them to the SEC if if those teams decided to leave. Yeah, so what happens is, you know, when you look at it, what you what happens once Florida State leaves the conference, I think you kill the rivalry um, in that sense. I know, you know, they were Big East, ACC at one time and all that, whatever. Uh, but they're not obligated. You know what I mean? They're still probably not obligated being in there. But, you know, you kind of think to yourself, if we're going to go, let's go together, man. We've been attached at the hip. University of Florida has always been where they are, right? They're not going to play us much. They're always going to play Florida. I get it. But they don't want to play us every so often. They'll try to play us when we're down and so forth and so on. But um, as we see these conferences forming, we see what – I mean, the writing is on the wall, right? 
it hasn't been a lot of talk lately yeah. about the super conferences, but they're still in the work. It's not the hot word. It's not the hot topic right now, but these people are still moving towards this. And I'm trying to understand be, besides the money, which is big, but besides the money, what is the benefit uh, in that sense? And I guess the money might be the only benefit that you need in order to make that move. But that, that's just how, I, how I'm looking at it. I'm not sure how you look at it. Uh, I, I wish that they would yeah, stay think, or if we're going to make a move, let's all do it together. Um, but if not, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I, I, feel like it's, I feel like it's the same thing or just besides the money because especially with this new playoff system that's coming in after next season, I mean, you win a conference. You win your conference, you're in. You know what I'm saying? Um, right, right. And I don't know. It kind it kind of confuses me. Um, like even with UCLA, I get they they because UCLA don't got a lot of fans, you know, um, and they're really in a crowded market. So I guess maybe they have to make that move. But it really, like I thought, winning championships brings a fan base in. You know, like when Clemson was winning, you know, being from Alabama, I saw people wearing Clemson shirts that I've never seen wear that I never even knew anything about Clemson. And you probably saw the same thing in Florida. Um, you know, I, I always felt winning brings more fans to the table but maybe maybe because some of these teams are going to make this transition um and i ucla especially ucla especially um it's going to make this transition i feel it's going to get beat up on you know um but I, I know i know i come on here a lot give give miami um crash miami but um i i really i'm really excited with the with the with the coaching hires from you guys i think you guys did good i think you guys actually got better um from what you guys did, I think losing Charlie Strong was probably the biggest loss y'all took this time around. The mm. air raid kind of scares me, so we'll be excited. I, I love seeing what coaches can do um, and how they develop their game because at the end of the day, that air raid coach, if he wants to get a, a power five job, he's gonna that that his offense is gonna have to develop. You know, um, he 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 ain't gonna be able to run the air raid. He's gonna have to incorporate this run type style defense in, or run type style offense into his into his game. So that'll be exciting to see. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm rooting for you guys. I'm rooting for you guys to make a push in the, um, in, in the ACC. Just like I'm, just like it's, it's, it's not fun seeing Texas and Florida State and Miami down. You know what I'm saying? It, it's kind of mm -hmm. fun to see you guys up. But, coach, you already know. You already know who's going to stay up and has been up. You already know. Roll Tide, Alabama. We staying up. We've been up. Uh, last Man, year we we took a little year right off, of we took a year off, but now we back. and it's time, coach. Congratulations, you played yourself. <laughs> hey, but God God bless you, coach. I'm gonna go ahead and land my plane, plane early. No, nah, don't land it. Don't land it. Um, oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. Mayday, mayday. Let's get that dude out of here, man. I love it, man. I appreciate it, man, so much. Thank you so much. I love teasing. But one thing I like about it, we have other fan bases call in. I'm coming to the next caller, 2277, in one second, man. I just had to give him a hard time. Big shout out to a new subscriber in the building. Thank you for subscribing. G37 Live 305. Thank you for subscribing. You put two chips in my cup, so. Ah, there it is. Take a sip to you, man. I really appreciate it. Now, nah, I. He's cool, man. I really enjoy my man Laker. He's fun. Coming to uh, 2277 right now. Caller, talk to us. Give us your name. Where you calling from? You got two minutes. We got people in the queue. What's up, Coach? It's Hurricane Logan. How you doing, man? Logan, man, y'all clap it up for Logan in the building. Man, y'all clap it up for Logan. <laughs> I love it, Logan. How you feeling, brother? What's up, dude? I'm good, man. I'm 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 actually uh, you know, I'm excited. I'm looking I'm looking forward to the season. So, okay. You know, well, I we think we got better. We fit, ready. You know. Say what? I said we ready, man. So talk to us, man. What's your yeah, thoughts? No. What's your thoughts? Um, I, I I think we have better fits as coordinators, and uh, you know, some of the position coaches, the changes we made. I think uh, you know, last year it looked good on paper, but I think this year schematically, I think it's going to fit our players better. And uh, I think we're going to see better results. You know, uh, I don't know if you watched Mario's interview the after the spring ball, but uh, 
he just looks so rejuvenated, man. Like this, the, the the team and the players, they just seem so refreshed and like they're looking forward to something that's actually going to work, you know? It, it just seemed different from last year. I'm not saying that, you know, we're going to sit there and win every game, but, you know. Well, I'm going to say, I'm, like I, I'll tell you this. Uh, yeah, definitely. I, I, I talked about that at the very beginning. I'm not sure if you caught it at the very beginning, but usually coaches do feel that way when they get to actually do what they love. Like, you know, I know Mario loves the recruiting part, but we're talking about the X's and O's and getting these guys to move and teaching them, right? It's all, it's just like a teacher, right? Teachers like to write lesson plans, but they they more they would rather teach, if that makes sense, right? Most teachers don't like right. writing lesson plans. They want to teach. And so that's really what it's all about. So, no, definitely. I, I, I definitely can see that, and I'm excited. Let me ask you this on the, on the last go around. What's your thoughts, either or offense or defense? Do you like either one of the schemes, both or whatever? Uh, I, I, I personally, I think both of them are going are going to fit our players. Personally, that's just my opinion. I mean, as soon as I heard TVD say "let it rip" in the interview, I was like, "Yep, we're back." Like he's going to be back to what we were doing with Lashley. I think our offense and defense is going to shine, especially if we have three safeties on the field. You know, I love it, bro. I I, I just want to see. I, I just I guess I just want to see it. You know, but I, I think we're going to be much better than last year. And uh, you know, I think the relationship with the players and coaches is going to be a lot better this year than it was last year too. So, you know, no, nah, definitely, man. I appreciate it, man. But hurricane Logan is always, you know, you part of the team regardless, man. Thank you so much. You always support it. You back stateside. I would take it. Right. Yeah. 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 I just got back from Poland trying to transition out of the army. Actually, I'm done with this crap. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on and be part of the team, man. We give you a job. We don't pay well, but we give you a job. All right, man. Well, you take care, bro. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate you. Anytime, brother, man. Thank you so much, man. All right, big shout out to Hurricane Logan. Coming to 77-61 in two seconds. Uh, he, he made a great point. He just wants to see those things happen and those guys come in. But, uh, hey, big shout out right here to Thad. Thank you for subscribing, Thad. We got three little coins in the jar, so let's see if you can knock Coach off his rocker, man. Y'all got to keep subscribing, making it happen. But anyway, let me get to 77, 77, 61 coming to you right now. Call or talk to us. Give us your name. Where you calling from? You got two minutes. What's going on, Coach, man? This is Muhammad. How are you? Muhammad, how are you, my brother? What's going on? I'm good. I'm good, man. Chilling, chilling. How's everything? I'm good, man. Excited for the spring, man. Yeah, yeah. I feel you. I feel you. Got to wait a few more months till we get the season, so. That's all we got to look for right now, right? <laughs> hey, I'll take that small fix right now. I mean, between now and about a month and a yeah. week, or a month and month and two weeks, I'll take it. Hey, I'll take these these practices yeah. to keep me uh keep my hand from having the shakes. Yeah, no, it's better in the Miami Heat right now, coach. <laughs> That's all we got right now. Shit. Trying to tell you, it's tough out there. So, talk to us, man. What's your thoughts yeah. on 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 the Canes, man? First practice. What have you been hearing? What are your thoughts? Um, I hate, hate to use the word expectations, but what just, just what's your, your overall thoughts? Honestly, I'm hearing uh, good things. You know, uh, I like uh, the offensive coordinator hire personally because, uh, you know, I figure I think that this style fits more of what our roster is. You know, we don't have a dominant wide receiver run and we don't have like a we don't have depth on the offensive line that you need to run, you know, like power. And we don't mm-hmm. have, honestly, the the stud running back. I mean, we got some good backs, some unproven guys, but we don't have a, a known, like you say, coach, a defensive coordinator, who they scheming against our running backs. You know what I'm saying? So this right here, I think, works best for what we got. So I think the offensive coordinator is going to do great. The scheme is going to do great. I'm not saying we're going to win eight, nine games. I think we'll, you know, we're still rebuilding, coach. Let's be real. So I think if we can win, if we can win seven games this year, hey, that's a that's a that's a hell of a season for us. I think. <clears throat> Listen, I, and, and to your point, man, uh, uh, don't even worry about the whistle. The other person that was on hung up. <coughs> Excuse me, but let me tell you something. <laughs> but but let me tell you something, bro. You're 100 percent right. Um, we have Mark Fletcher, the big time running back. We have guy Travante Citizen. Apparently, is still out due to injury, or maybe they're just kind of protecting that knee. Uh, from when he got hurt, right? Um, we still have Henry Parrish. That's really 
uh, and, and Terrell Walden, of course. But so far as a workhorse that who, who's played significant timing, uh, is Henry Parrish is the only person we have that we know of. We're right. not talking about potential. We're talking about that we can – we have data – Excuse me. We have data on, of significant data, rather. Right. And 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 do I think Mark Fletcher be great? Sure. Freshman, Javante Citizen. Hopefully they'll get him all you know patched up and worked out. And come the season time, he can come in and, and release some of that as well. We lost Rooster. We you know go back to that of uh, Franklin, back to Cody Brown. We talking about all these big bodies that are gone. You know, Chris Johnson is another right. one. These are all new faces in that room. And so, with that being said, and Don Chaney coaches, I don't mean to cut you off. And no, Don you're Chaney's right. He's always, you know, let's be real. He's always hurt. Yeah, and he's another one I believe that is still going to be out. If I'm not mistaken, I think he still may be out this spring. If it is, he's very limited. I may be wrong, but I think that's the case. Uh, so yeah, I, they I, do have him out there. Hey, he should be wearing the quarterback T-shirt. Uh, don't no hits on. Uh, no, nobody even touched Don Chaney. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You hit him with the stop sign. You got the stop sign jerseys on, the real ones. <laughs> yeah, that's what he gets. You get that quarterback jersey. Oh, God. Don't hit my baby. But anyway, um, what's that old thing that came up? Ooh, my baby. When they hit him. But, yeah, man, I'm going to ride out because, like I said, nobody else in the queue <clears throat> right now. But, like I said, they say Don is healthy. But I still think that they're going to be – he's going to have a very limited pitch count simply because – they don't want him to get tweaked. They need him for the season. You and, got to, yeah. And I pray for him, man, because, you know, bro, like you hate to see guys that just get bitten by the injury bug and they just can't get over it. And you just hate to see that, man. Right. So so I'll definitely check it out. But let me um, let me see here. Let me give a quick dono uh, update right quick. Right here, Ken the Tongue in the building. Showing love, Coach Hayes. Keep doing your thing. I appreciate it. I see them three coins jump in there. Mm. Y'all gonna have Coach Tipsy in this thing in a minute. All right. Before y'all know it. Also, big shout out to Miss Diva One. Mrs. Diva One, $20. No, let me move this out the way so y'all can see the coins go in the cup. Get out, get in the cup. There you go. Mrs. Diva One, $20. She says, here to show support. I really appreciate it with the hearts. Always watching and loving the content. I'm still waiting on someone to pick Ed Reed up. Hashtag drumline mom. Hashtag UAPB, that's the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. Thought Coach didn't know that one. Big shout out to some HBCU love over here. M4, I hope that's not a G-U-N. I don't know what that is. HBCU fam, hashtag swag. Halftime is game time. My goodness. You hashtag out, Miss Diva. I love it. So thank you so much for the $20. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Really, It really is fun. Oh, we got Hoodie Girl in the building. Let me give Hoodie Girl her love. Hold on, I got to find my little button. Clap it up for Hoodie Girl. All right. She says she's fashionably late with the with the latest hoodie. I see the latest hoodie she has on in her, her picture right there. Those are the cool hoodies. Coach got to get one of those. But let me go ahead and jump on this thing, man. Muhammad, how, how you doing with the work, man? Where are you located now? Right now, I'm doing a contract here in uh, in Lakeland, so I'm Lakeland. not far from uh, was it Orlando? Yeah, Lakeland, uh, Lakeland yeah, Polk County, baby. So I'm here. Yeah, I'm out here in Polk County, bro. <laughs> a bunch of Gators and Seminole fans, and you know, a bunch of out of towners out here. It is, man. Well, that Strawberry Festival around there somewhere, isn't it? Then they got a Strawberry Festival going on in the oh, Tampa area. Yeah, it's going on right now. Yeah, all it's right. going on right now. Well, be safe out there, man. That's all I'm going to tell you. Drink your cane juice responsibly. <laughs> Absolutely, Coach. And you have a good one. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be in touch. I'll definitely call in later on. All right. Appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot. Let me go ahead and get the next call in this thing. I already know who it is. It's my Absolutely. man. I appreciate you, bro. Got my man in the building. We got Warren in the building. Warren Kane. Talk to us, baby. What's going on? What? I owe you and the fan base that I preach to an apology. I said last year that Mario had had, which means is in possession of, Field Team 6 built. I was wrong. He's building. It's a 
it's a uh, ongoing thing. So I want to stand corrected on what I misstated last year because I am excited. I don't want to say I'm drinking more cane juice or, or drinking more Kool Aid, but just listening to the players when they respond, they are far more enthusiastic, energetic, upbeat. Uh, they have far more positive responses for the questions asked on how things are going. I think that's a good tell. I don't know. I'm not a coach. haven't played in a very long time, but just reading what I saw from the, from the players and of course the coaches, they're all excited. That's their job to, to, to do that. But when you hear from the players, cause they know there's a difference mm-hmm. and I'm excited to see what happens. So we're going to go run the tables here. No, I'd like to, but I don't think that's going to happen, but I think it's going to be, Oil and water difference from what we saw last year, and I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm Warren. getting giddy, Coach. I'm getting giddy. Warren, you're getting giddy, Warren. Last time you got giddy, we ended up five and seven. So I don't know if you need to be getting giddy, Warren. Hey, that's all right. Listen, hey, I, I equate it like this. You go out to a restaurant one time, sometime, whatever, and you're, you're trying. You're, you're expecting the best, this, that, and the other, but you get let down. That doesn't mean you don't go out to dinner anymore. You just either don't go out to that place or you give it another try. You find out what's going on. So that's what we're doing here. Hey, listen, it was a bad date, okay? It was a series of bad dates, all right? And and that's what it is. We're, the problem is going to get fixed. I have faith, and it's and everybody keeps talking about Mario, 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 Mario. Mario is part of the equation. Not Let's not forget Alonzo Highsmith. Let's not forget Dan Radakovich. You know, they're – I am tickled pink for what they're doing. I've said this on the show before too, tickled pink. But you say tickled I'm telling pink. You, I'm, I'm tickled pink. I really am. I'm excited. My brother tries to, you know, to, to rain on my parade, all oh, this and all oh, that and all oh, this. I'm like, listen, oh, God. I, I don't care. We we got a young guy with nothing to lose as an offensive coordinator. We got a young guy with nothing to lose as a defensive coordinator. We got a Hall of Famer on the end. We got a two time national champion as a coach. We got a national champion. Uh, uh, coach as a, a, a wide receivers coach. Listen, I am I am more than pleased with, with what Mario and company are doing in Miami right now. I couldn't be more excited. Hey, I know I, that thing's gonna ding any minute now. So no, nah, I didn't start it because there's nobody else in the in the queue. So you riding out, Warren? I don't start Good. it till somebody starts. Off. in the Let's queue. talk for like an hour. Come on, let's do it, baby. Ain't nobody else calling in. <laughs> oh, as soon as I said that, somebody <laughs> called in. Exactly. So go ahead. You got two minutes, man. Go ahead, talk. You got your deal. Go for it. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm really excited. You know, I got to tell you one thing, and this is a complete side note from what uh, from this conversation and Miami football. I want to thank you for what you do, the way you talk to people, the way you look out for the players, you look out for the coaches. You know, you look out. I got to tell you, and and on a side note, on on another tangent here, one of my favorite callers beers is the coach from Texas. I don't know the guy's name, but he called. I think he's from Houston. I think so. You were guys yes. right. Yeah, listen, that guy needs to call in every show, okay? I will gladly, you know, shut my mouth and just listen because listening to you two going back and forth and talking, I loved it. There was no argument. It was I, it was great. It was absolutely great. And Muhammad, my, the previous caller, listen, he's always been a – I love his calls. I do. I don't know what mm-hmm. it is about that guy. I love his calls. So awesome. I'm, I'm glad for them. So I, I'm going to make this quick. I know the, the thing's getting ready. You got about a minute. I'm, I'm Go for it. Okay. I'm just, I'm just excited. You know, I, I and I'm I'm so proud of Mario for not being bullheaded and sticking with the run. And we're going to grind it out. We're going to grind it out. I know that's what he's going to do. So we have to have a run game, and I get that and build an offensive line. And I I'm grateful for that. But he's cognizant of the fact that he and his way alone are not the only way to win in college football. There are other ways to skin a cat, and he's bringing in the air raid. Is it going to work like a champ our first year out? I don't know. But I think given the some of the guys on the staff or, or on the players are familiar with how Rhett Lashley did things and the excitement level from the, the the offense and the receivers and the quarterback and everything. I'm really excited about where this offense is going next year. And and same thing with defense. We've got a lot of guys coming back. I know a lot of guys are hurt, but that's okay. You know, I'm, I'm just – I'm kidding. This is going to be a long summer. Oh, my goodness gracious, it's going to be a long summer. It's going to be a long one. Well, listen, man, we hit so, 10,000 feet, man. We about to go ahead and hit the runway in three, two, one. Ding ding. I love it, man. All right, buddy. Appreciate you, Warren, right. as always. You Thank soon. you for those kind words, my brother. Thank you so much. And we're gonna I'm going to our next caller right now. 
All right, bud. Thanks, man. Thanks, Bye-bye. man. All right. All right. We're going to our next caller. I'm not sure. I think I know who this is. I'm not sure. But if it is, I have to see because I've been missing this person for a long time. And my spirit has not been sitting right with me because I have not heard from them. So hopefully this is them. Caller, talk to us. Hey, Coach, this is Keyshawn. Ah, Keyshawn, you ain't who I'm looking for. But anyway, you here. <laughs> I'm gonna mess with you, but you're not who I'm looking for. Nah, you good, baby. Talk to us, Keyshawn. What's up with you, man? Nothing, man. It's good. You know, spring football back. Feeling good. It is, man. So talk to me, man. Like, I'm having an issue. Can I be honest with you? Besides Warren, I'm trying to think mm-hmm. anybody else. People just come on, they uh, springs football back. I want to hear some excitement, bro. I'm not hearing any excitement. I'm not hearing. Listen, I know it's only been two practices now, technically speaking, but I want to hear some. I want to hear some like, hey, man, listen, spring ball back. I'm fired up. Kevin Beard out there coaching his A off. Jason Taylor doing this. Coach Crystal Ball wearing the bright orange shorts with the white shirt with the bent up bill on the hat. Like, I want to see. I want to hear some something, something. Talk to me. Yeah, I'm I'm hyped, man. Um, I think we got a lot to be excited for. I think the other caller a couple calls ago said it right. Um, I think we're built a lot better for the season, but I also think that going seven and five is you know a good year for us. Um, I see a couple teams that we could be, you know, depending on if everything goes as planned. But I see also a couple teams that we definitely are going to lose to. Um, I think we're a lot deeper. Um, I think that we have, you know, better chemistry now and I'm hoping for the best, but I do have some bold predictions. I want to, I want to throw at you. Um, mm. Hold I on. Let me put my seatbelt on Keyshawn. Hold in. on Keyshawn. Let me put my seatbelt on. <clears throat> Hold up. I got to put the seatbelt sound on. Hold on. Let me buckle up. This man say okay. some bold predictions. You got two minutes. Hey, we got a new call in. Talk to me. I got some bold predictions. All right. I think that uh, Damari Brown, the American Heritage corner, will come in. And I think him and his brother will start at the corner positions. I think Cam and James hold it down in the uh, safety spots. I got Wesley and Malik Bryant starting at linebacker. Uh, Leonard Taylor and the Purdue transfer I have starting at D tackle. This is just off the dome, so I'm not looking at the roster or anything. Okay. Defensive end, I'm going to say, I think they put Harvey out there again for some reason and Mesidor. I think that's the starting defense. Um, On offense, I think Kobe Young and uh, the Clemson receiver we had, uh, I forget his name. Latson. Latson. Outside receivers. Latson. Uh huh. That starts this slot. Mm hmm. All right, so hold up. You know me. I'm I think, the, uh, I think hold, Ray Joseph starts that kick return, too. Uh, I'm cool with that. I'm the underdog king now. Hashtag mm-hmm. underdog king. And there's one name you didn't mention. And maybe I need to wake you up because you were sleeping. You didn't mention Corey Flagg. Hey, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't be mad at it. Um, Corey Flagg. Did have a great. I'm not a Corey Flag hater, but I just think that um, I think we got some dogs coming in, Coach. Um, I'm really excited what we have at linebacker this year. Um, I think that Corey Flag may start off the season, but if Malik and Popo come in and they stay healthy, I think by the end of the year that he has no reps on the field. All right, I hear you. I'm coming to 1851 in a second because this stuff you talking, but Coach by them. Mm. Hey, I like Corey Flag. I just think we, you know, we finally got, we finally got the size and speed that comes with it. You know, we were just putting him in because that's all we had. But you know, competition brings out the best in other people, and we got some kids in there now that's not afraid to step in and take the take the road. These kids want it, man. I'm excited. I think Chris Graves is in for a potential breakout year as well. And um, wow. I'm excited to see what we can do besides Cam Kinchins. I don't think we have enough safety depth, so I'm excited to see. I think that we end up moving Jaden Harris back to the safety position. He's 195 now. I think we move him back to safety. 
for some quality there. All right, man. Well, I appreciate your call. I appreciate your comments. But when we going to get to this next call, 1851. Yes, Thank you, man. I really appreciate you, man. Thanks a lot. All right. All right. Real quick. This is who I was looking for. Ms. Wilcox. My spirit don't sit right, Ms. Wilcox, when you don't call in. So I'm going to need you to call in. I know you've been busy out there getting people some monies and things, and I understand. But my spirit don't sit right, so I need you to call in, Ms. Wilcox. It's because Coach Hayes love you. Real quick before I get to the call at 1851, coming to you in a second. James Wilford says, Coach Hayes, you have run programs before. What is Mario looking forward to in his upcoming season? Is Gaddis experiment in the review mirror? I'll answer the, 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 the second question first. Yes, Gaddis experiment is in the rear view. Second, he is looking for progress. You have to, as a coach, you have to look for progress. What does that mean? Progress meaning from spring to the season. He's looking for the progress. Progress is the key word. However you want to put it into the culture, progress into the play calling, progress into the, the play execution, progress into whatever it is, progress is the umbrella term. When you're first starting out, you have to see progress. You have to see the guys getting better every day. That's a coaching cliche. Oh, our guys are getting better every day. Our guys, are, yeah, that's a cliche. But you literally want to see that. I mean, people say that even when their guys are not getting better. Oh, our guys are getting better every day, and the dudes are taking a dump. But they say that because it's positive. But when you say that, that's what truly what you want to see. So, James, to your question, you want to see progress. You want to see from a quarterback, ball placement. Is it getting better? Decision-making, is it getting better? Pre-snaps read, are they getting better? Linebackers, right? Progress, what is it? Am I dissecting the play faster and faster and faster? DBs. Am I understanding different things when it comes to defensive backfield, route combinations? What's going to happen to me? Every day, something has to get better, 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 right? Whether it's a one notch or 10 notches, it's got to get better. D-line, what's getting better? Am I playing how I'm supposed to be playing? Whether I'm supposed to be squeezing this gap, going to get the quarterback, wrong arm in this deal, whatever it is, I got to get better at it. Closer, closer to perfection as possible. Hopefully I answered that question. But 1851 has been super patient. And I just want to say uh, thank you to them. So let me go ahead and get them on the line. All right. Real quick, 1851, call or talk to us. Give us your name, where you're calling from. What's happening, Coach? Hey, yeah. My name is Greg. I'm calling from Homestead. Homestead, exit one. Talk to us, man. Campbell Drive, 316. What's up? Hey, yeah, you know something. You know something, but. The freshman that I'm most excited about, I seen him play at 10 p.m. Y'all seen him playing Little League at Killing. It's Bobby Washington. Big dog Bobby Washington. He probably like the fastest person on the defense, to be honest with you. I seen an article. They said he ran about 21 miles per hour. I know his dad. I played at Miami Killing with his dad. Okay. I think he was going to see the field this year. I love Wesley. I love a couple of other linebackers. But I'm telling you, big dog Bobby Washington is the man to look out for. 6'3", about 220 already. Probably going to run a 4'5", four, 4'6". Four, he can run he, now. Coach. He can run. Listen. He's faster than his brother. Listen, and, and, and James uh, X from Caneville said uh, he has he reminds him of the speed of Willie Williams. He didn't say he was Willie Williams, but he was talking about from a speed perspective. He was talking about he reminds Now, one thing I say about that dude, see ball, hit ball, go get ball. So he, that's one thing I can tell you about. Bobby, I'm sorry, Robbie Washington, is that once he makes his mind up, he's gone. You know, uh, here's his only thing as a freshman. How fast does he pick it up? That's it. That's it. How fast does he pick it up? And that's the majority of these guys. Malik Bryant, how fast does he pick it up? Will he make mistakes on the football field? Most definitely. But that's okay. Long as, like I said earlier to James Wilford, Wilford, excuse me, long as there's a progression, long as it's not an uptrend, yeah. uptrend, uptrend, and then it plateaus. As long as you're making progression, that's okay. Um, but from the from the physical attributes, they got it. I've seen Malik play one-on-one. -on -one. I've watched him play. You understand what I'm saying? So, yeah, most definitely. Yeah, yeah, I just love the kid, Bobby Washington. And, um, again, I played with his dad. 
at uh, Miami Killian. And I seen his dad running heels with them boys while they was like five, six years old. I'm not surprised they're good as they is, but that's what I'm looking out for. That's it. That's all I want to say. Go Canes. All right, man. I love it, man. I appreciate you calling in. Thank you so much. Let's get some more callers on the line. I want to give a big shout out right here to Juice for the super sticker of $3. Thank you so much. I got three little gold coins in my cup. Let me take this off so you can see the three gold, the three green coins in my cup. So thank you so much. I'm going to take a shot. Of the cane juice. Coach gonna be a little twisted up in here. I got about an hour left in the show. Y'all tripping. Mm. And that ain't water either, baby. Trust me. I'm trying to tell you. That thing biting. Mm. All right, let's get some more callers in. 862-799-9956. You guys asked for a better phone system. I gave you one. Now I put you in the queue. Do me a favor. When you call in, don't just hang out. You hear me talking in the background. You can hear me. Just hold tight. I got you. I'm coming to you. Don't don't call in and hang up. You don't have to do that anymore. You can literally call in. I can hold up to a thousand people. So call in. Hold on. You sit in the back. You can hear the whole conversation so you don't miss it. And then I'll get to you. I promise. I promise. We got 421 people in the building. Thank you guys so much. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Let's get this thing. We're trying to get to 35K. I have to be honest with you. I have not produced things like I needed to on this channel, but I had some other personal things I had to take care of first, right? Personal comes first. I love my people, but I'm always doing the shows that I'm obligated to do regardless of where I am. Okay. Here's my second thing. All right. You, you asked me, what does the cup mean? No, it's just to show that people donate. Watch. It's coming in a few seconds. You check it out. Watch this. It's coming. So anyway, um, what was I going to say to you? I can't remember what I was going to say. It's just a way to show donations and stuff, man. It, just give a little thing. That's my little cane juice cup. Let me see if I got it right there. There you go. Shake my cane juice cup a little bit. Rattle it around. But anyhow, um, Bobby Washington, those guys, they have it. They're freshmen, though. They are freshmen. And I said this earlier to a friend of mine that was on the line, big Kane fan. I said, guys, <clears throat> if we're playing a ton of freshmen, we're in trouble. I have to be honest. We're in trouble. These guys are good. These guys can play. And they have potential. There you go. This is what the cup means. You see them dropping in the cup. Look at that. Woo, dropping that thing in the cup. Dropping in the cup. Oh, dropping in the cup. Hold up. I want to drop that thing in the cup. <clears throat> Y'all working coach today. But anyway, when we do that and you play a bunch of freshmen early, we're in trouble. I had to just call a spade a spade. This is not a knock. This is a reality thing. This is for the University of Miami or for Miami University that we play game one. It don't matter. If a lot of true freshmen, hear what I said, a lot of true freshmen come to your program and start at a power five at that, you are in trouble. I just want to say that. Real quick, Rohan Robinson, $20. Appreciate you for the $20 super sticker. Thank you so much for that, as well as Miss Diva One, $5 super sticker. Thank you so much for that as well. Reggie in the building. Look at Reggie, man. This cat here. What's up, coach? You've been MIA. We're on the street. You was in punishment and couldn't leave the front port. Well, you must just begin to the show. Coach is trying to take care of stuff. I got a lot going on, but guess what? I got that behind me. Great things are happening. And speaking of that great segue, big shout out to Alex Tabio from Certified. I'm sorry. Blow up. More, uh, Pioneer Mortgage Funding. He was with Certified Home Loan. But Morgan, Pioneer Mortgage Funding uh, for a deal that I was doing on some real estate. Let me tell you something. He hooked me up. I got 407 people in. I can really tell you about it. I said it early. It was seamless. It was painless. It was a lot of work, but it was seamless and painless because he took care of everything. He's a big Kane fan. Check him out. Anything to do with home financing, give him a call. Give him an email. It's All the stuff is in the description. There's one thing. I said this before. There's one thing I got to beef with Alex Tabio about. That's him right there. You see him. I got one beef. He could not tell me that the Miami Hurricanes was going to win the Natty this year. 
for 2023. Or technically 24. But I don't hold him accountable for that. He ain't home financing. He's not a football, uh, uh, you know, God in that sense where he can't, you know, he ain't part of Illuminati, you know, real estate Illuminati. But anyway, let me get back to my deal. 415 in here. Thank you so much. If you want to, you can join and become part of the team. It costs you absolutely nothing. All you gotta do is hit the subscribe button to join the team and it'll notify you as well of all of the latest content coming out. People have been asking me about the WREs, the watch, react, and evaluate. They are coming back. I'm, it's a new season. I'm trying to do some new things with editing. I got to learn some stuff. Can't find anybody to edit for me. I need some help, guys. If you are in editing or whatever the case may be, <clears throat> hit me up on DM on Twitter. We could talk it out. All right. So anyway, Rod Smith says NFL goes off potential. That's true. You know what, Rod Smith? Shout out to you. Shout out to you. They do go off potential. But, but the pool is a little bit better because you're talking about high school versus college. So in high school, you get anybody who walks through the door and play. College, you're recruited to play there. In the NFL, you kind of recruited as well or drafted to play there. So it gets tougher as you go up these layers. But to your point, you're 100% right. It is potential. No, they have not done it yet. We've seen guys, and I don't like to use the word bust, but we've seen guys who had a very high ceiling in college and go to the NFL and it just doesn't work out. We've seen that hundreds of times. We've seen guys who have been okay in college go to the NFL and, and just soar beyond beliefs, become Hall of Famers and so forth and so on. I.e., our own Jason Taylor. Let's look at him in Akron, right? Yeah, he did well. I don't know all his stats. But then he goes to the NFL and becomes the HOF, the Hall of Famer. Right? Who would have thought that coming out of Akron that this guy would have been a Hall of Famer? So, yes, to your point, you're 100% correct in that sense. Wait on the phone line, 862-799-9956. Go ahead and give us a call. Y'all killing me. I'm gonna pay all this. I pay for this phone line, too. Y'all don't, y'all don't use it. Go ahead and call in. Don't be scared. Hoodie girl, I know you probably at work, but if you could call in, I appreciate it. I want to hear your perspective. I love to get the women's perspective on the Canes. I know you're big with the basketball. I saw your tweets. I've been following you. You were hurt. You were hurt about the Canes the other day uh, with the uh, buzzer beater with Florida State. That was huge. But uh, <laughs> that's fun. I got to get you on the show one Sunday. Man. We got to talk. We got to talk. But anyway, <clears throat> um, yeah, I figured you were at work. I understand. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Ross Smith says, love you, coach. I love you too, man. I appreciate it. Uh, but anyway, let's get back to this deal. Let's talk a little bit about scheme. Let's talk defensively. Lance Guidry, a Louisiana native. Um, He's coming in with a, a lot of pressure, a lot of man concepts. I'm going to tell you, I have one fear. I only have one fear about this defense. And we saw it when Michigan was playing Ohio State. Let me go back and say why I say this. When Michigan, when Don Brown was the defensive coordinator at Michigan, he was very big on man concept. I mean, he played man, two man. A lot of it was man. Probably 90%, if not more, of his defense was a man concept. When he ran into Ohio State, he ran into the mesh concept. And the mesh concept is a big beater for man. I have to say that. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is my only fear in this defense. I had an opportunity to coach Devin Bush, who was at Michigan, linebacker at Flanagan High School in Pembroke Pines. This kid was a middle linebacker. He's not a kid now, but at the time. Shout out to Holson. He was a middle linebacker, but also did kick return, punt return. Where you find that at? Only in South Florida, that your middle linebacker can be your kick return or punt return. But anyway, 
So that goes to tell you he can run. That's why I said that. He can run. But when they played Ohio State, he was at a disadvantage because he's playing man from different levels. Jackson Smith and Jigba. Thank you to Knox Kane. Appreciate you. Jackson Smith and Jigba. Uh, Garrett Wilson. A lot of those guys were running these mesh concepts. And he couldn't keep up. Not because he wasn't fast. It, he, he's put at a disadvantage. You don't get a chance in zone versus man. You see a guy coming. It's almost like the the, the four by one. You kind of get a run and start and you run on with them. My only fear for this is that people find that. And they may watch this video if they do. Just give Coach a, at least give me a subscription, a thumbs up or appreciate it, Coach, or something. But we have to be able to find ways to play levels and mesh concepts. Because if we don't, we're going to be hurt. We're going to be hurting. I promise. Mark my words. March 5th, 2023. Mesh concepts will put us to sleep if we don't know that they're coming and we strictly stay in man. I just want to say that. I don't want to. I'm not be labor. I'm not trying to be negative and so forth and so on, but I just want to say that. Knox Kane in the building. $5 says, forget scheme. I need that Kane juice recipe. Coach is working on it right now. I'm in talks right now with Martha Stewart. Listen to me. I'm in talks right now with Martha Stewart, and we're going to actually create a recipe and do a show. And hopefully Trick Daddy will call me on the, to his uh, podcast. He has, I got my pots, and I can talk about the cane juice. You know what I'm saying? So big shout out to Trick Daddy. He could call me on his, his podcast. I got my pots. You got all these other people on it. They ain't even from the crib. He can call coach. You know what I'm saying? Also, big shout out to Luke. I want to get Luke on the show one day. I listened to him today on the Twitter space. And, um, man, we sound like we're the same person. I hate, I, not to hate to say it, but it's funny how two different worlds, you know what I mean? Big hip hop mogul, rapper, you know, trendsetter, trailblazer, and a coach from you know, care of city, but we see football the same way. He was talking about recruiting, putting kids in the van, having the um, relationships with coaches where he's talking about, look, coach, just because I say something don't mean he's going to go with it, but there are some coaches that really trust you. If I tell you this dude, a ball player, you're going to take my word for it. A hundred grand. He a ball player because you built that relationship. That's important. I want to get Luke on it, but I want to have a serious conversation. I want to talk about coaching. You know, I broke down his Yellow Bus Boys about a year ago, probably at this point. Uh, we've talked on Twitter and so forth. Uh, but I really want to I want to get Luke on here and so forth. I want to talk to him because we look at a lot of things exactly the same. And I think a lot of fans don't get it. I think a lot of fans look at him in one light as still as Uncle Luke, still a coach, but Uncle Luke. You can't really, you can't miss that because that's who he is. But he's a certified coach. The dude is on it. I remember we were here in Orlando, and he was here at the time. I believe he was at Northwestern. Maybe it was Central at the time. And he came up here, talked a little ball. It was good stuff. And I had a newfound respect. I have to be very honest. And then you guys look at me as Coach Hayes as a coach. But I'm telling you, we got a lot in common. We think a lot alike. I'm listening to him talk on his Twitter space today. I'm like, bro, this dude is saying exactly what I would have said. When you talk to coaches, they were talking about powerhouses in Texas and Miami. Even though Miami hasn't been good for 20 years, it's still considered a powerhouse because of recruiting and Texas, how they could be good. But when Mac Brown left, if you didn't check it out, check it out. But anyway, I just wanted to say that. That was huge right there. Um, yeah, don't be laughing. Martha Stewart, coach with the convicts making hooch. <laughs> hey. 
Get out of here, Terry. Terry. If Snoop Dogg can hang out with Martha Stewart, Coach Hayes can hang out with Martha Stewart. I'm sorry. Did you see what the DC did with Marshall's personnel? Uh, D. Burnett. You see what DC did with Marshall's personnel? It's a little vague question. I'm not really sure what it meant. Um, let me see. I went on a little rant, so let me see. <laughs> hey, man. She on the sweet Chiba. All right, I know who this is. Let me get my man in here. This J Love up in the building. J Love T. I need you, baby. Coach was drowning over here in Cane Juice. Talk to me. Happy Sunday, Coach, man. Happy Sunday, man. Can I tell you something, J Love, before we get started? Talking, talking. I'm I, I'm super happy when you call, and I don't even know why. I think when you call, <laughs> I'm being dead serious, J Love. When you call in, that's why I wanted to talk to you. I'm gonna call you tonight after the show. I got your number on Twitter. When you call in, I get excited as a cane guy because I think when you talk, I think you are even kill. I think you call a spade a spade. Would that be fair? That that's fair. That's fair. So now I, fair. I said all that to say I know you're gonna give us some uh some real talk. Some real talk on Kane Talk Live. Talk to me. All right, first things first. So I papa freaks all the honeys, dummies, Playboy bunnies, no. those want mm-hmm. monies. Oh, my bad. I, I got into my hit, biggie rhyme. My bad. Go ahead. Talk to me. Hit, hit, hit your boy. They love T with full slaps, dog. Ready? Hit your boy. Before I start, just, yeah, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Can you stick your chin out just about six inches? Are you ready? It, it's out. It's out, my bro. It's out. That's one. Are you ready? Backhand. That's two. Forehand. That's three. Here go my last Venus Williams. That's four. Ah, okay, on the first subject, damn coach. Sometimes we really don't know what we what we be talking about. I don't know if you if you hit this situation on your last show. Who would have thought, right? Because fans was talking about getting rid of this guy. He was taking up space to end up getting an NFL job exactly a week later and, and finding out he's one of the hottest names in the football world in Rod Wright. Like, damn, like, how did that, like, 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 explain to me, this is my first one. How does that, like, 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 how does that even go by? Like, like, are fans like, like, like me, like that naive to what's going on behind the scenes? Like, do, do, is it sometimes we don't know what we're talking about or we don't know or we don't see or we, we're not in those rooms? to see who's that guy and who's not? Because I'm still shocked about it, and that even humbled me a little bit. All right, so let me ask you this before I go. Before you go on. You're saying that Rod Wright was one of the hottest coaches getting the NFL job. Is that what you're saying? He had three interviews. Three. Okay. Um, and we were talking about getting this guy fired because he was taking up space. <laughs> taking up space. He's taking up space. Um, here's what I'll say to that. Because his name was not flying around. I have to say this. There's two um, circles of names. There's the fan base circle, which we are all a part of. And then there's a co- coaching circle that we're not a part of, including myself. Mm. Okay. So in coaching circles, there's a name flying around, going in circles, right? Who's the next hot dude? Why, what, where, why, what, 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 why, where? Then there's the fan name, and usually it's tied to wins. Okay? It's tied to W's and L's. Yeah. First first thing we did with Gidry and Dawson was what did they win? What did they lose? 
right or wrong? Facts, facts, facts. Because they're the coordinators. We broke down their record, who they beat, how much they beat them by, or how many points they gave up, so forth and so on. But in coaches' circles, some guys are not winners in the scoreboard, but they're great coaches. Does that make sense what I'm about to say? What I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Meaning there are some guys who in their own right, they're very because I'm gonna tell you this. Let me ask you a question. Are you a dolphin fan? What, 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 what fan are you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, dolphin fan. Do you can you name me all the position coaches for the Miami Dolphins? No. But you can name 70%, me every, yeah. But you can name me all the position coaches for Miami Hurricanes. Yes, sir. Because it's a different realm. Same thing in the NFL. Oh. NFL, these coaches have been around a long time, but most of these guys are very good at what they do from a position standpoint, but not from a coordinator standpoint. Like a very good running back coach, very good old line coach, very good wide receiver coach, very good DB coach, but will never be coordinator material, if that makes sense. Yeah. But for colleges, we want a guy that was a good position coach, moved up to the coordinator, because we want to see upward mobility. NFL, you got guys who have been position coaches for 20, 30 years have never been in a running for yeah. coordinator position. That's a fact, coach. Big facts. Big facts, man. Even when I look at it now, I'm like, damn, how is these things? They're so stable. It's like they don't, I'm not going to say they don't care about a ladder, but but why do you, like, why do you think it's, it's like that in, in the NFL level, but in a college level, it's almost like a doggy dog where people are trying to move up. Like, what, what What do you think is the biggest difference? Can I tell you? You want to know my honest opinion? Tell me. If I was a position coach, some people don't want that pressure. Some people don't want the pressure of being the coordinator. That's the fast way to get hired and fired. It ain't the running back coach. Yep. And it's the coordinator fault, head coach fault. It's always head coach coordinators. Head coach coordinators. I don't hear about the running back coach getting fired, but in college, we talk about all 10 of them cats plus the head coach. Yup. That's a fact. Yeah, that's a big fact. You can't hide. As a matter of fact, it, 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 it's, it's the opposite. If you're, if you're behind the scenes too quiet, it's a problem. If you ain't making no type of noise, it's a problem. So here's my question. You're a doll fan. I'm a doll fan too, but I had to be very honest with you guys. Very transparent. I'm not a big NFL guy. Not, not my thing. Kansas City Cartel, I need you to call in too, man. I ain't talked to you in a minute, and I'll be feeling a certain kind of way. But anyway, um, what was the worst position for the Dolphins last year? The worst position? Uh, I'm going to say offensive line. Okay, who's the O-line coach? Oof. And that proves my point. I don't even remember. But that proves my point. Yeah, I don't even remember. <laughs> who was the offensive? Oh, hold on. What was the who was the who was the offensive? I'm sorry. What was the worst position for the Hurricanes last year? Um, it was multiple uh, wide Just receivers. Pick one. Uh, offensive line. I'm, I'm gonna say receivers. And who was his coach? Who were the coach? Oh yeah, Josh. Gattis. Okay. And, and the person behind Josh Gaddis, Cooney. All right. Let's go back one. What was the second worst for the Dolphins last year? Offensive line. Well, you said offensive line already was the first. What's the second worst? Oh, oh no, no I said um, wide receiver, and I named Gaddis. Okay. Named Gattis and no, no, no. I'm talking about for the Dolphins. Who? What was the second worst for the Dolphins? Oh, the Dolphins. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Um, the 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 second position that was the worst after wide receiver, I would say cornerback. Who was the DB coach? Cornerback. Yeah, only because he a legend on uh, um, certain. Not not certain. No, yeah, certain. He went to FSU. So then, therefore, and that's only because he was a legend. That's the only reason I know his name. And so, they, so there you go. And he just got there. And remember, Patrick Certain was at American Heritage and so forth and all that good stuff. So these are the things I'm saying that when you look at it, it's a total different. It's a total different animal 
when you look at it in a sense. I'm coming to you, 0964. Coming to you in one second. Um, one, 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 one more. No, we got, before yeah, we, we got go. time. This is a touchy subject you, you touched on. Mm-hmm. Um, this is this is about even the the certain situation and even Lennon Hickerson. Why? Like, what's wrong with, with Florida high school football with, with coaches that are trying to move up and they can't? Because when I look at Hankerson, right, shout out, shout out to that individual. Shout out to him and his family. Mm-hmm. He did it in five years, no BS. Why are so many other coaches are stuck, especially when their teams are, are at the pinnacle? Are you think they're being too nice? Are you think that they don't want to have a bad stigma of, of taking advantage of kids? Cause that kind of like breaks my heart a little bit, man. Especially when I found out about Archie Manning's high school coach. Bro. Oh my God, he already had the Broncos. So he, he, here's my thing: I have to be very honest with you. I've had plenty of players that have gone on to the NFL or to college, as you see behind me, in a box full more. I'm gonna change them over to some. I've been saying that for the past two years. I probably could have written one of these kids to a college job, but as a person. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be hired on my own relationship building and my own merit as a coach, not a coach that had a player. And maybe that's why I'm not coaching college football because I didn't do that. You understand what I'm saying? Because I didn't do that. There are plenty of coaches that have done that. And therefore they implemented a rule called a player association rule where now you have to wait three years. If you're tied to that player in any form of facet. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I should have done that. But I didn't think that was the right thing to do. Because I didn't want to get there. I, you know, but I want to say, I didn't want to get there. The coach, they, they they got the kid. Now I'm expendable because we don't need you anymore. And they get rid of you. I just feel right. like I, I wanted you to say, this guy can coach. He needs opportunity. And maybe I shot myself in the foot. So maybe that's a part of being too nice. The second but, part but, is... But I think, you know what I think too, Coach? I think it's a race thing because I think because, you know, we, we, we are who we are, mm-hmm. um, African-American, black. I think we get hit with that stigma. But with the other race, it's not an issue un- unless unless it's your it's your own flesh and blood. And in my opinion, man, that, that ain't right. Well, I everyone could... needs someone to, to get on top. So I'll say this. That may be it, but I'll say this. We don't demand it as coaches. Fact. We don't demand it. As a coach base, hey, Mario, hey, uh, 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 Mike Norvell, hey, Billy Napier, hey, Gus Malzahn, if you don't get these guys in, don't come back to my school anymore. Hmm. See, we got to know how to band together. If somebody knew that they wanted to get a guy in, he had he had aspirations to coach college, and you knew that he could do it. I'm coming to you, callers. I got three people on the line. I'm coming. Give me a second. But I want to get this point across. If we start demanding it, they'll make it happen. But back to Luke's point, Luke Skywalker, Luther Campbell, a.k.a. Uncle Luke. We can't just start getting the off-the-field jobs. You got to start getting the jobs on the field. Yeah. I, I know a guy right now. I'll say this. I won't. I'll leave him nameless. Let me ask you this. I'm going to give you a resume. You tell me if this guy's good enough to coach college. You tell me if this guy's good enough to be talk a position to coach. And I'm coming to you guys. Don't hang up on me, please. Cause I want to, I see who's calling. I want to talk to you guys. What if I told you, I know a gentleman who was highly touted coming out of high school, won a national championship, Mm -hmm. was a first-round draft pick, Mm -hmm. won a Super Bowl, Mm -hmm. came back and coached high school and won a high school championship, state championship, and has been a has been now in the college ranks for the past seven years and still can't get on the field. He's highly qualified. Would you Mm -hmm. agree or disagree? Overqualified. Overqualified. But they still, but they still want, he still can't get on the field. One of the 10 jobs on the field. Jesus Christ. 
Let me ask hold on, hold on, hold on. I want, I want, I want to say this goal. clear. I want to say this clear. Won a high school championship as a coach. Won a national championship as a player. Won a Super Bowl as a player. First round draft pick. Coached in college, like was around major college football, but can't even get a job. But then at the same time, you gonna tell me my dog only good enough to be in the back room? That's what we call it in the back room. Room, yeah, yeah. They call him the space of space. You just keeping it real. But he in the back it's, room. It's Hold on. So when that coach go in that living room, hey man, you know we got a guy right here that's coached the national champion. I mean, coached the high school championship, won a national championship as a player, was a first round draft pick, won an NFL Super Bowl. Yeah, he's on our staff, but he ain't in your living room. Hmm? He can't get a shot, dog. He can't get a shot. I'm getting hot, bro. I'm getting hot. But Jay Love, listen. Listen, man. I love when you call in. We're going to talk tonight. Do me a favor. DM me again because they probably got pushed back. DM me again. I'm going to talk to you tonight online on the phone. Thank no, you. No ifs, ands, no or maybe. No problem, coach, man. I, you guys have a blessed one, man. All right, man. Appreciate it. I'm coming to uh, 0964 and 0165. You hold tight. Don't you hang up on me. 0964, call or talk to us, and I got to put you on the plane. Talk to us. I already know who this is. This is my man, D from Duval. What's up, baby? What's up? Hold up. Hey. What's going on, man? I'm good, baby. Talk to me. What's up with you? Uh, man, you, you threw some more stuff to talk about. And when I was just listening to you when you were saying about uh why you're not a real big fan of the NFL no more. And on the lines what you all just talking about, it, uh, Kaepernick, at the Kaepernick situation, uh, put the dagger in my chest. That was it for me. So mm. I don't care who win, who don't win no more. I, I've, I've been watching, uh, black coaches get messed over. Um, I, it made me made me trip out when I was watching uh, uh, the U Talk show the other night. And they had a uh, Art Shell nephew on there. Oh wow! And I remember when Art Shell, I remember when Art Shell got fired from the Raiders, and he w was twelve and four. Who, when, when coaches start getting fired at 12 and 4? <laughs> hey, Lovey Smith got fired from Lovey, Chicago. Lovey Smith. Because Green Bay Lovey, won the game. Remember, yeah. Remember remember how many winning seasons Dennis Green never had a losing season with Minnesota? And they, and, it, it, and I remember when Jacksonville turned him down and he was overqualified for that job back in the day. But I mean, that's, you know, that's a, another subject, man. But yeah, sure. that's what turned me off on the NFL. I'm tired of the. The racism, the blatant racism in your face stuff, but on the on the side, the flip side with Miami, uh, I'm I'm happy that you know they they getting the practices started, or whatever. And uh, what I was talking about with uh, Devin and Larry Frank on this show is that I think they're gonna play better. I I can't predict the the record or anything like that, but I was telling them that you got a lot of no name coaches and no no disrespect. I mean, coaches that went to smaller schools. Like you said before, it don't matter what school you at. If you can coach, you can coach. The only difference is, you know, D1 got better, greater athletes. Or uh, the Power 5 got better, greater athletes. But if you can coach, you can coach. They got something to prove. Because, you know, a lot of people, that I'm sure they're hearing it. Uh, that man from Houston, man. We don't know him and so on so on, man. So I think they hungry. They got something to prove. Sure, man. Well, D, I thought they're gonna translate to the field, but yeah, go ahead to the next caller, man. Yeah, I got an exciting one coming up, man. But D, you be okay. safe out there. I know you might be on that road, so you be safe, yes, brother. Sir. Yeah, I'm on the road. Yeah, man, you I be safe out there. You take care, man. All right, but appreciate you. That's right. D from Duval. All right, we got the next person coming up. Let me tell y'all something. I'm super excited to talk to this person. In the words of Warren, I get giddy. Because when I don't talk to them, I feel a little funny. I really do. They bring balance to my life. And I miss them. So, without that being, without, without further ado. Let's get the obvious stuff out of the way. We're all here to do what we're all here to do. Because you didn't come here to make the choice. You've already made it. You're here to try to understand why you made it. I thought you'd have figured that out by now. Miss Wilcox, a.k.a. the Oracle, is in the building. 
Talk to us. You get no plane. You your own plane. Talk to us. Hi, Coach. How you doing? I'm doing great. I've been missing you, Miss Wilcox. Really? I have been missing you. I haven't. I've done a couple of shows. I've been busy. But I've been doing a couple of shows and you haven't called in. And I know you're doing your thing and I understand. But I want to hear your take on the spring no. ball. You left me in the in the bottom of my bottle. You know, I'm a genie. I go down and sit there like genie in a bottle. All right, well, I'm gonna rub the bottle. Let me rub the cane juice can. Anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna rub I'm gonna rub the cane juice bottle. You know, go ahead. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna respect you and make you can talk. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm saying I'm rubbing the cane juice can right now to get you out of there. So go ahead. Come on out. Well, I guess I'll be drunk in love, huh? Oh! But anyway, let's go on to the next. <laughs> you started it. But anyway, let's get to what we need to get to. Number one, the football team is not on probation. They use it as an excuse, but it's the twins, the two twin young ladies. And Miami is like an escape goat because Miami was picked from the NFL again about a 2,000-some class that went 32 guys went in the first round, and you're still up top of the NFL. They don't like you. And at the same time, $13 million. 800 for a quarterback. Why not them to be on probation? Why not they've been called out? NCAA needs to clean their house. And they wrong for what they're doing. Mm. Because number one, all these buildings, 78 universities, want that money to pay their buildings, not the men, not the young men. Because what? They are in debt, they sell. And we're coming to a reset and what depression and a recovery by June of this year. And at the same time, Mario and his crew stepped up and said, Well, we'll take this penalty because they're going to court against this. And that's going to be a fight because, again, the $13 million they offered y'all quarterback to come over there and they didn't pay them. They eight hundred thousand dollars. They paid the quarterback, and nobody said anything. But at the same time, they had to use Miami as an escape goat because number one, you still number one in the NFL. Seventeen went in the first round. Sixteen went in the next round. So why is everybody? They just don't like you. You don't have any dirt on you. They just put a stain on you. Because why? You got it all in your yard. The backyard all around. The number one players come from Florida. You're going to always be the high of the crop. And they just don't like you. So anything else, Coach, since you missed me? No, ma'am. You said a mouthful. I got enough to, to ponder on and think about. But you can't be a stranger because you are a part of this show, whether you like it or not. You are a part of this show. You still want to put me back in my bottle. <laughs> I'm going to put you right back in your bottle. Go on, get back in there. <laughs> Good night. Bye, y'all. Bye, Miss Wilcox. All right, we've heard from the Oracle herself. There it is, 8606. I'm coming to you next. 8606, give me one second. I got some donos in the building. $5 from E. Brown says, Coach, means nothing. Too many dynamics involved other than athletic accomplishments. Pull your resources together and own something. Okay, I'm not really sure. Let me make sure. Coach, means nothing. Too many dynamics involved other than athletic accomplishments. Pull your resources together and own something. I guess you were talking in regards to uh, the coaches, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe that's where I am right now. We got a caller calling in right now. I appreciate it. Uh, let me see here. I just saw something that's funny. Y'all boys funny. Y'all better leave the Oracle alone. She got something funny. Y'all better, y'all better chill out, bro. Mark Stamper, you stop it. I mean, right now. 
Anyway, let me get to 8606. I appreciate it. Carla, you are live. Talk to us. Give us your name, where you're calling from. Coach Hayes, you summoned me now. This Kansas City Cartel, man. Man, I had to call you out, though. I, I ain't gonna lie. Can I tell you something? I'm a jealous YouTuber. Go ahead, Coach. I'm a jealous YouTuber. You used to call in all the time. <laughs> then, then you start making stakes over there at the pregame, right at the tailgate. <laughs> then. I, I don't hear from you no more. I said your steak was good. I don't know what the problem is. So I'll be wanting to hear from you. I appreciate that, Coach. It's just a little life change, man. I've been working, man. I'm actually on the clock right now. But I called because it called me out. I said, well, let me go ahead and, and holler at Coach now. I'm trying to sneak with my earpiece to listen to the show. Coach called me out on the show. All right, let me go. Let me make sure I, I dial a digits for coach. I had to call you. What's yeah, good I, with you, though, baby? I'm good, man. I'm excited. Spring ball is here. We two practices down. We got 13 left. I'll definitely be at the spring game, man. We're going to have a good time. And I just want to hear your thoughts on it, man, because I always thought you had great points. You made great points when it came to the Miami Hurricane. What's your thoughts on these canes with all this movement going on? Nobody else called in. So as long as you can stay without getting caught up on the clock, we here with you, baby. So uh, talk to us. Um. Well, first of all, uh, the movement, I mean, I don't see any negative movement. I, I think the nature of college football, you, you got you got musical musical chairs when it comes to the coaching staffs anyway. Mm -hmm. So it ain't a it ain't a the house is on fire type of scenario. Uh, I do. I do like the fact that, you know, Mario is um, basically assessing things real real time, if you will. Like, hey, we're going to need this. Let me go find one of these. We're going to need that. Let me. Go. And he's not just jumping on, you know, the, the hot name or the or the, the next best thing, you know, the, the, the flavor of the week. Mm -hmm. He's actually taking his time. I know it's been a lot of people been panicking. Oh, he's taking too long for this, taking too long for that. But I like the hires. Um, to be quite honest, I had to ask around to get information, you know, that I needed to know about Dawson. Mm -hmm. uh, I know a couple of people that know Guidry, uh, and they gave me good good uh, reports on him. Uh, my issue, <laughs> he, my issue is this, and it's not really an issue. I would say my my focus going into this season is communication and continuity. Mm, good call. I want to see from the top down. I want to see what that looks like from the coaching staffs to the coaches, from coach to coach, from coach to player, and from player to player. Because last season, I saw a lot of Discommunication, not miscommunicate. They was disconnected, mm. and when I say it just didn't look right, TVD walk off the field, he walk over that way, and, and then uh, the 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 wide receiver walk over that way. Nobody ain't by no coaches, ain't nobody. The coaches ain't ain't nobody huddling together, ain't nobody. And I'm like, what's going on? What's where's the the disconnect? You know, I pay attention to a lot of that stuff. And I think the fact that, you know, we got some guys who, you know, may have uh, something to prove coming from, you know, uh, coming from conferences that, you know, they were able to hold their own. You know, we're we going to see what that looks like. My other situation that I'm focusing on this season is um, our offensive tackle. Hmm. If there's one position group that I'm really like, I don't want to say worried or concerned because we are technically still in a rebuild. But if there was one <laughs> one one position, it would be the tackles. He said the rebuild. reason being we have a we have a Zion coming back that we don't know which Zion we're going to get. Uh, we have a well. I've heard since practice one. I've heard that. They went on ahead and kicked Jalen Rivers outside to the tackle. Mm. So, you know, he hasn't played that since high school. Okay. So we're going to see how that holds up. And then 
you know, if you really look at it, um, we got those young guys, and I'm be real, I'm high on the young guys on the on the freshmen. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I'm talking about Pancake and Maui Goa. Uh, but you know, if you got to play two freshman tackles, if you got to start two freshman tackles, um, you know, it, it, I I I wouldn't feel comfortable with that because that says a lot about your depth. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, outside of those two guys, you have a young man like Michael McLaughlin, who was a converted offensive tackle, who still, you know, I've heard my I heard my reports from practice one. You know, he he still ain't what they thought he was. Mm-mm. I'm and sorry. Then, oh, hold on, Ken. Hold, hold, hold on, Conte. Hold on, hold on. Now McLaughlin, that's seventy four, seventy seven, something like that. He the six eight boy, the big, big, big one, the tall, the tall one from Columbus. Yeah. Um, Who came in with the Rodriguez kid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He hasn't played. He he been hurt so much. Uh, the center, it, it, the but center. that's what. Yeah, Rodriguez hasn't played either. He's been hurt so much. So what I'm saying is the depth on the outside is going to be an issue. We are very, very, very guard heavy. We're a guard heavy team. And we got about, I think we we got three centers right now with Rodriguez technically being our third with Lee. Uh, Clark went ahead and left. And then we've got, um, I think that was Dennis. That's the second uh, center. And we got Tripp also mm-hmm. who can play either. So we're okay at center and guard. But them tackles, we don't have the depth as of yet. Unless the Zion is 100%. And he can be a shade of his, I'd say, 2021 self. Then we may be cooking with grease to get through this season. But it, it, and if you ask me, that would be the the, the position group I'm I'm going to be looking at this throughout the season, just in terms of how they endure and and who steps up and who may take the step, you know, uh, and hold their own outside you know uh, there's another young fella uh that they're very high on uh what's the gentleman's name oh my goodness what's the kid's name i have no idea it's 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 missing me but uh they say they're very high on him so you know they're saying that he could possibly compete for a starting tackle job this season um but outside of that I love our safety room. I love our linebacker room, what we're going to uh, actually evolve into. I like the fact that Wesley is taking young Bobby, uh, Bobby Washington and, and Malik Bryant under his wing. Um, I'm yet to see what's going to happen with Corey Flagg, but I know uh, big brother uh, Maui Goa. Uh, is going to be in the fold there competing for that starting uh, middle linebacker position. Uh, and I'm excited to see that front, that defensive front as well. Now, DBs, I look at it like this. I, I, I look from, from the trenches out. If if the trenches is on, if the trenches is on, then the linebackers is on. If the linebackers is on, then the DBs are on. I don't too much worry too much about the DB. Right. You know what I'm saying? But, I we gonna but find out. that, that D line and that linebacker core, I need that, that front seven on point. I feel you, baby. Listen, I, listen, we got a couple of callers in here, man, but you still got, we got 30 seconds on there before you got to land the plane. I got a real question. In 30 Go for in, it. in 20 seconds, what's your, what's your thoughts about Emory Williams versus Curry Brown? Emory Williams, I ain't scared of nobody. And I like that because Shakuri Brown is a dog and iron shop and iron. And I'm going to be real with you. May the best kid win. I've watched a lot of Shakuri and I haven't watched a lot of Emory. I watched his high school tape, but he has this type of confidence about himself. Even when Rashada was in the fold, he wasn't even flinching. He wasn't worried about that. So, hey, I, I love it. I love it. I'm 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 ready to see who gonna you know what I'm saying who gonna who gonna step up because I'm gonna tell you something 
Don't think it's all sweet with with, with number nine well, we this gonna, season. Well, we're gonna find that's out. Just, man. That's just me. Yeah, hey, 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 we might see a lot of who whoever you know take that that backup job. We gonna see. We might see a lot of them this season. You never know. All right, we're going to find out, boy. But, hey, I appreciate, know, you, I appreciate you, man, risking it all, man, to call in. Thank you so much, man. Don't be a stranger, man. Come on, man. You my homeboy, man. And I know. Nah, hey, spring game, to... coach. Coach, spring yes. game, you already know. We doing um, surf and turf, man. Just like last season, man. Lots of tears and, and some ribeyes. So, pull up. I got you. Well, listen, I'm wearing swim trunks and a cowboy hat. Surf and turf. I got on swim trunks and a cowboy Let's hat. Go. I want it all, if you understand me, man. But I appreciate you, man, as always. Let me go to get to the next caller because they're killing me up in this joint. <laughs> okay. Go yes, Kane. Go Kane. Okay. All right, man. Real quick. Great call right there from Kane City Cartel. Appreciate it. I'm going to 5416 next. But before I do, I'm going to do something I've been meaning to do for a long time. And this person has been hanging with Coach Hayes. They've been part of the team for the longest, always in the building, always causing problems. And they about to get into one of the smallest groups ever. A lot of people are part of the team, but ain't that many people. Ain't that many people a moderator on this show. And y'all need y'all to clap it up for baby Shaq. Just became a blue wrench holder moderator in the building. All because. All because. You hit, you caught me slipping. It says coach was in a liquor days. That's a cane juice day. You cut it out. So baby Shaq, right there is a blue wrench having person. If you ask me, so big shout out to baby Shaq. Let's go ahead and get into this thing. Fifty four sixteen in the building. Caller, talk to us. You got two minutes because you got people waiting on the tarmac. Talk to me. Hey, how you doing, Coach? Uh, this is going to be a quick flight. Uh, my name is Sterling. I'm from Opelanka. I stay in uh, Duval County now also. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, wondering, I'm wondering about the transition um, from high school football, the offensive scheme that they run in high school football, to the air raid system, um, and, and I'll get off the line for you. So you want to know – hold on. You don't have to leave because you may have a follow-up question. You got time. So you're asking what's the difference between high school and what they're running at Miami? Is that what you're asking? Just, just the, tra the transition from it. Um, would it be easier for the kids to pick up? Do you see the most – you know, I, I'm a fan of the high school football. I watch a lot of the, the games. and It looks like they're running the air raid. They call it a spread, but it's four or five wide receivers most of the time. Um, do you think that's why most of the kids are excited about it because it's easy to translate to? They understand the system already? Well, yeah, but it is exciting, right? Let's be honest. It is an exciting thing. And most kids, it, it, it tailors itself towards seven on seven, right? It tailors itself. It, yeah. You don't see a lot of five on fours going around camps. You see seven on seven. Where do the big boys go when all the seven on seven camps going on, right? They go into a personal trainer here and there, whatever. There's a couple of camps here and there, but 707 is the big thing. Nike's gotten involved. Adidas has gotten involved. All of these people, and they're sponsoring it. You've seen these travel teams. You know what I mean? So it's a big marketing ploy. Well, Air Raid lends itself to that as well because it's a lot of quick throws. It's give me the ball now, those type of things. Let me go be a player. You know, I will say this. A lot of players don't understand this. You still have to run the football and run it efficiently. That don't mean I don't care how you run it efficiently, but in order to win natties and conference titles, you have to be able to run the ball and run it efficiently. If you understand what I'm saying, 707 is sexy because we throw the ball, we throw the fade route, you know what I mean? All that stuff, it looks great. But to win 11 on 11, you got to be able to pound the rock when needed. You got to be able to get first downs to keep the clock going when needed. You got to be able to keep the chains going when needed. And so I, I just wanted to put out, kind of put that out there in that sense. But yeah, I appreciate it, man. Thank you for calling in, bro. I appreciate it, coach. Anytime, man. Thank you, brother. All right, we're going to uh, 6907 in one second. I got a dono up here. Baby Shaq is a blue wrench. We got three blue wrenches. We got Ellen. We got producer Ellen. We got T. Hines and now Baby Shaq. 
Oh my God. Baby Shay, you always get me in trouble, man. I ain't messing with you. I ain't messing with you. I'm not doing it. Coming to 6907 in one second. Let me get this dono out real quick. Big dono right here. Uh oh, Coach Blue, that one. Sorry. All right, here we go. Big dono right here from Will B. I'm not going to call their whole name out. Will B for the four dollars. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. It really means a lot. Thank you so much on Cash App. So if you like to uh, donate on Cash App, you're more than welcome. We'll put it up here. And he says, uh, for no hype, perform. That's what he says. So appreciate that. means a lot. All right. Let's go on and get to the next one. You got to be able to pound the rock. Reggie says, not me this time. I'm chilling. Oh, matter of fact, Reggie, your girl called in last time, uh, L-O-L-M. She said she wanted some smoke. She said, you want smoke? We want all the smoke. That's what she said right here. Do you want smoke? You want smoke? We want all the smoke. She said she wants smoke. Anyway, let me go and get on the 6907 coming to you right now. Call her, talk to us. Give us your name, where you're calling from. Yeah, good, good evening, Coach. E. Brown. E. Hey, Brown, listen. thank you for your dono from earlier. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. I, I, I donated earlier. Uh, my conversation or my text centered around the, the the coaching. The person that you mentioned was a coach. He was a he uh, he was a uh, you know national champion, Super Bowl winner, so on and so forth. I mean, uh, those things sound pretty, but that's you, you. It goes a little a little bit deeper than that, mm -hmm. I think, and I think it comes from the standpoint of of. Maybe maybe the good things that you see may not be the good things that those who are making the hiring they see. Maybe they see some negatives or whatever. That that's probably what, what's what's going on there as well. I'm okay. not saying that there's anything wrong with the person that you you're talking about, but uh, I mean there's there's a whole lot of there, there are many dynamics that go along. And the other thing is that if if we want to get into we want to get on the field, of course we want to get on the field and and do do certain things when it comes to coaching and and uh, making some of the decisions associated with the, with the football team, whether it's college, NFL, or what have you. Uh, our community, we, we, we have the resources. We have the money. But we've got to pool our resources together and practically purchase an NFL team. We've got to, we got to support. The, the colleges where uh, I, I hate to talk about say this by race, but we we have HBCUs where we could we we've got to support them to where we get our coaches get those coaches in those positions and get those get those you know get the the notoriety that comes along with. It. But I, I you know it's listen we're all we're all Hurricanes fans right now we're looking for things to talk about and. And uh, I'm I'm more interested in trying to find out more about what's going on with the with the spring practice or what have you, and looking in from that standpoint. But uh, you know, on, on the, with with some of the things that we're talking about, is that this person looks good, that person looks good. Well, hey, listen, everybody looks good when you you don't have a that fire breathing dragon running down your face. <laughs> That's you right. Doing the football, everybody. Looks good. That's right. Okay, so hey, I'm not impressed with that. I mean, you could. You can talk about a high school kid looking good coming out of high school and coming to play college football. Man, when he gets four or five of those guys running behind him, it, I guarantee you he's going to tuck his tail between his legs. You're going to wish you had, uh, uh, you know, DVD out on the field. So and that's, those, 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 that's my comment. Those All right, well, well, real quick, I do want to say this. So to your point, yes, okay, um, I'll say this because I do know the person, but your points are valid about who I was speaking to because you don't. And so, yeah, there, there may be other people that, for example, we may not know and we may be speculating, i.e. Eric B. Enemy, right? Everybody's brought up the whole Eric B. Enemy, why he can't get a job, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Okay? I still think that's criminal, but that's what it is. Well, for this individual who I'm speaking of, um, I'm making a comparison to other people who get jobs with less, who may have only one of those accolades and people praise them for it when this man has done it at all levels. So for example, right? Um, let's just say, for example, 
just for comparison purposes. Everybody's ramping and raving about Jason Taylor, which they should. What's the first thing people say about Jason Taylor? He's a what? No, they say he's a he's a Hall of Famer. He's a Hall of Famer. He's, there, he's, he's a Hall yeah, of he's Famer. Hall of Famer. He'll 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 impress he'll impress the parents and the football player when he sits in the living room and, and whatever. Listen, that's that's media talk. No, but here what but here but here my point. I know, but here my point, E. My point is with the with that accolade, he and again I'm only making a comparison because we're talking about hurricanes, but with that accolade, they did the same thing with Ed Reed. They did the same. Bro, people are talking about Ray Lewis getting a job, and I've, I've never heard Ray Lewis talk about he wanted to coach. Yes. So I sell exactly. that to say, I, but I sell that to say, well, yeah, this Jason Taylor may be a Hall of Famer. Great. Awesome. Good. I think he'll do fine. But then this dude has, he's done it at every level as well. May not be a gold jacket wearer, but coach, coach the high well, school well, champ. Not to interrupt you, Coach, but let me let me let me give you an example. Maybe some of the callers may know who I'm talking about. Maybe not. Bobby Knight, going to basketball. Bobby Knight has mm-hmm. all the all the accolades and everything that you want to have. Would you hire him as as your basketball coach? Right now? In today's society, no. Back then, I would have. Today's society, no. No, I, I, I'm I'm talking about with today in today's society. Would you hire him? No, no, because no, it's, you wouldn't. right. That, and, and that and that that could be what's going on with. I'm not saying Eric enemy has that. I, I'm not saying that the guy you're talking about has that. But there could be some things that we're not aware of. You may not be aware of that's preventing those things, preventing those those people from getting those positions. Correct. Not simply because, not simply because I'm black or he's black or whatever. Listen, as black people, we got to stop that. I agree. We got to stop trying to get it. We got to stop trying to get everybody to like us. Okay, we got to stop it. We just got to. We we we've got to. We got to. You know, get together. We got to pull our resources together. We got to stop trying to get everybody to like us. Pass bills and laws to get everybody to like us and to get them. We got to move on, man. You, we've got to. We got to strap up the boot, strap the boot up, and go to work. You go to so, work. You go to work by getting ourselves involved, getting involved with with, uh, with with trying to trying to own a football team, trying to own more than one football team, so that we could we could represent ourselves in a in a in a in a, in a, in a, in a world where where people listen to you when you have those dead presidents behind. So here's my question okay. to you, E. I'm gonna just say this piece because I got to wrap it up. I know Flo is getting ready to come on here in a second. Here's what I want to say to you, and I and I know we're talking about practice. I kind of went left, but that's okay. Let's stay with it. Matter of fact, if you don't mind, let me get the donos out of the way. I don't want to miss their donos because they did donate their money, and then we'll, I'll jump right into it. FTW says, Coach, do we have many Smurfs in the receiver room, in your opinion? And big shout-out to Norman for the $12. Uh, thank you so much. He just left $12. I'll just say this real quick to you, FTW. I still think we need a big body. We didn't get one in this recruiting class. We definitely have to get one in the 24 recruiting class. A six plus foot guy looking roughly around a six foot two kind of guy to grow with this team. I know we have Jacoby George. I'm sorry, uh, uh, Kobe Young, excuse me, who's about a six four, six five ish, maybe six six kind of guy, but he transferred in. We got to get a guy to grow with us. So to answer your question really quickly, FTW, we got to get one in this 24 class, in my opinion. A guy that can climb the ladder. Love Ray Ray. Love Robbie. Love all these guys. But unfortunately, you're starting to see a cookie cutter of those kind of guys. We got to get a guy that can climb the ladder. Because you think if Kobe has a great year this year, you think he's going to stay around? No, he got to go. Now, I know we have other guys that's out there, but we're talking about a guy to grow with this system. So hopefully that answer your question. Now, back to, to E. Brown. Um, I hear what you're saying. What you're saying does make sense. One, I think ownership will be very hard because the owners have to vote you in. That's first of all, but that's neither here nor there. I agree that we have to start stop worrying and complaining, but we have to change us first. I'm going to actually do a show on this tomorrow where they're talking about Deion Sanders is a culture vulture. 
we are quick to tear each other down. You're talking, everybody wants to call Deion Sanders a cultural vulture because he wants the band director to play whatever song he's going to come out with this year as his theme music. And we call him a culture vulture. But guess what those schools have been doing for years? LSU, go Google it right now. Go Google right now on YouTube, Side of Your Neck by Cameo, LSU. They go and hire the assistant band directors from Southern, Grambling, FAMU, Bethune-Cookman, Howard, Hampton, all these schools to come to the PWIs to teach them. Miami does it. The University of Miami is playing Talking Out the Side of Your Neck. They're doing that. (laughs) But guess what? We won't call them culture vultures, but we'll call a a, a Deion Sanders a culture vulture because he was at an HBCU. See, that's the, I mean, this this has many layers to it. But to your point, Ebron, I just want to say this because I can, we, we could talk about this forever in a day. But I don't like, we, we're quick to tear each other down when you're just trying to make a better movement. But yet we won't tear the people down that culture appropriate. And I can get into the rap game. I can get into all this. The West Coast is Jimmy Iovine. The East Coast is Leo Cohen. The R&B game is Clive Davis. You, They just put a thing out. TLC just put a thing out where they went and pulled a pistol on Clive Davis so they can get their money. Clive Davis paid them girls $50,000 each. And they made 60-something million. Yep. And, and they only gave them $50,000. But that's a whole other story. I'm not going to belabor that. But, E. Brown, thank you, man. I really do appreciate you calling in. Play, pay attention tomorrow or, 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 or subscribe or whatever, and we'll talk about it. I'm going to talk about Deion Sanders tomorrow. Coach got to get back on his grind. I've been busy. But I'm going to get back on my grind, and I'm going to bring up this culture vulture stuff with Deion Sanders uh, tomorrow and so forth and everything else. But we, the problem is we tear each other down first. Now I'm going to go back and say this to your point about the gentleman I was speaking to, you know, who Bobby Petrino is right. Yes. He get two jobs right after he lied about being on a motorcycle. He fall off. He messing with a side chick in the cabin. He loses his job. Oh, he get a, hold on, hold on, oh, hold on, hold on. I'm, I'll just give you some, some thing. He get an $800,000 job and gets right back. The dude that did the cocaine, I'm sorry, allegedly snorted a white powder substance, because I can't call it cocaine. I can't tell you what it was. But a dude that was either sniffing BC powder or goody powder or cocaine, I don't know what it was, sits out for a year and a half. He is back at the San Francisco 49ers, and he is now the run game coordinator. Let one of us have done that. You never see this guy again. Well, here we go. I.E. I'm going to give you an example. I forget the gentleman's name. I want to say it was Wake Forest. He goes back to Indiana to go get his things. Him and his wife get into it. Yeah, he pushed the wife down or whatever the case may be, not to belittle it, not to downplay it. He gets charged. He'll never get a job again in life. Never gets a job. Hold on. Let's talk about the brother at Georgia who was the athletic director. He get pulled over with some prostitute or something. He never gets another job again. But hold on. Who gets a job for buying escorts on a school credit card? It's Hugh Freeze. And he get another Auburn job. Like and, these... and, you, and you know that it... Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And, and, and you know that it involves... I'm, I'm sorry. And you know that involves, Coach. That, that, it, that it involves... It's 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 like nepotism. It's like with the family, but however, it was friends. You got friends in places and what have you in these in these, in these places and like heads of universities or whatever. They're gonna they're gonna select their friends. They're gonna select their friends and put their friends in in, in the office. We 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 cannot we cannot. I hate to say this, but we cannot. Do the same thing as our white brothers and sisters do. We cannot. And then when we do do those things, when we do do those things, we we get ostracized for. We get we get we get you you get literally neutered for it. Okay. But the thing mm-hmm. is, is that. But but the, the thing is, is that when 
when we have when we when we put ourselves in the position. Hey, Charles Barkley said a long time ago, I am not a role model. We are a role model because everything everything that 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 has that transpires or everything that is sellable in this country. If you we as as African Americans, we have the ability, we have the ability to be trendsetters. Everybody imitates the hell out of us. Mm-hmm. We're the most intimidating group on the face of the earth. We're the most misunderstood group on the face of the earth. But we don't we don't take we don't take those things and then utilize those things to the best of to and, and put and put the, the best. So, so Mr. Brown, guess what we, I'm gonna do? But guess what I'm gonna do? Because I'm going over right now, and we going into a whole other realm, which I want to go into. Um, let's talk about it tomorrow. Do me a favor. Let's call in. I'm gonna do this because I, I'm already going over. But I'm gonna say this about robot. I never agree with Charles Barkley's statement. You know why? Because one. When you become a public figure, all of us, I don't care who you are, one of your favorite people that you looked up to was a sports figure. Right? I'm talking about as a little black kid, you was a sports figure. You didn't look up to the businessman or this man because it was none. It was usually a sports figure, OJ, Dr. J, uh, this person or that person or whoever the case may be. And here's a prime example. And I don't want to belittle this channel. I don't want to like downplay this channel. But I just started this show. I'm not sure how long you were listening. I'm in Fort Pierce off the turnpike, the Florida turnpike, getting gas. I walk into a gas station. And the dude like, hey, man, ain't you the dude that be on da-da-da-da-da? And what I had to realize, I've already realized because as a coach, you run into people all the time. But I don't know that guy watches my channel. What if I'm, I'm just saying... What if that's a kid, a teenager that's watching? I'm acting a straight donkey out there. When you become public figure, you do become yeah. role model, whether you like it or not, whether you want to be or not. You know Absolutely. how many you know how many kids looking up to John Morant right now, and he right here with a gun on his Absolutely. Instagram page. Whether he wants to be or not, he Absolutely. is. Comes money, comes responsibility. Come fame, comes responsibility, and so. If I didn't, if I wanted to go out there and do what I want to do, I would have never started this and, and just, or I would have started a radio show where you just heard my voice and never saw my face. So, hey, coach, yes, hey, coach, you're absolutely correct, coach. Listen, Michael Jordan made the ball head synonymous. Mm-hmm. Before Michael Jordan wore that ball, had a ball head. Nobody wanted to have a ball head. Michael Jordan made the ball head synonymous. He, 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 Dennis, Dennis Rodman, you can talk about Dennis Rodman all you want to, but you look around the, uh, the, the sports world, the athletic world, or any world right now, and you see tattoos all over people, you, guess where that stuff started? <laughs> I, I mean, we listen, we're going to talk about this tomorrow. Mr. Brown, do me a favor. Please call in tomorrow. I'm not sure the time, probably about 8 o'clock or so. I got to actually build a show, but I got to get off of here, and uh, we'll definitely talk about it, okay? All right. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate your donation. All right, real quick. I see my man in here, V12. I'm going to get Chris Keynes in here. I see Chris Keynes, and I'm going to get V12 to close this deal out. Chris Keynes, talk to us. You got two minutes, baby. Talk to me. Hey, what's going on, Coach? Uh, I can't hardly can't hardly hear you. You were in the back. Oh, can you hear me now? I got you. All right. Um. I just wanted to uh, just to say, like, uh, as far as with this whole thing with Jason Keller, that's all well and good. Um, OC, that's fine. DC, that's fine. Whatever. Um, I'm not sold until I see the product on the field. The first okay. day of spring practice, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. But um, it's like you're trying to believe a liar, coach. I've been believing lies the whole time. And they keep saying, no, I'm for real this time. I'm for real this time. I really mean it. I really mean it. And you want to believe it, but you keep on getting let down time after time after time. My whole thing is, let me see what you're working with. Let me see what you're working with on that field. See, talking ain't going to do it no more. Being lackadaisical ain't going to do it no more. Being consistent with being mediocre is not going to do it no more. 
TVD said with the coach team was the, the the team was tired of being five and seven. Okay, prove it. Don't be five and seven. Are you gonna go six and six? You gonna go seven and five? What you gonna do? That's all well and good to hear that. You gotta see it, coach. Mm. Just gotta see it. That's all. That's all. I'm I'm not saying that they're not. And I'm no less than a Kane fan than anything. But I'm just tired of drinking a Kool-Aid and it's just the same old garbage. It ain't no sugar to it. It ain't no substance. <laughs> oh, it's Splenda or Sweeten on this thing. Come on, man. You can't substitute greatness, man. Come on, man. For real. So I'm saying, dog. I just want to see it on the field. I love it. And, and to your point, and that's why I told people last year, temper your expectations. I will have an expectation after I see the spring game. Coach Hayes is a man of his word. I Last year, I said I don't have a record prediction. I said year two, I will have one. But now because there's so much coaching turnover, I'm going to stick to that. But I have to see the spring game first before I give out a number. And I will give out a number based on what I see in the spring. So, hey, K, man, Chris K, I appreciate you, man. Yeah. You better than me. You better than me. I want to see the first four games. That's what I want to see. Mm, but I, I got to stick to it, dog. I got to stick to it, man. All right, let me get my man V12 on here, man. We're going to get up out of this joint. Hey, tell, tell me to catch, catch him with his hands now, Coach. You got to catch him with his hands. hands. He always talk, catch him with his hands. Catch him with your hands. All right, man, let me get 12 on this. Dip. All right. Man. Appreciate it. 12, talk to me, baby. I see you on the line. Talk to me, 12. Hey, listen, man. Hey, that brother. All participants are on hold. Go ahead. My bad. Oh, All I... participants are off hold. I, I done the locked them up. Has been locked. My bad. Go ahead, 12. I'm sorry. I put you on hold. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Chris, yeah, he, he a man of my own heart. Sorry about that. Hey, listen. Look, in the words of Alan Iverson, practice. We here talking about practice? Now, come on now, Coach. We know better than that. I agree 100%. We're talking about practice? We got to stop this. Or do you remember a few years ago when everybody was up in arms about, oh, the Canes, they, they have uh, secret practices and the practices are closed and we don't know what's going on, so on and so forth. So we open it up and we get five and seven. So I'm with Chris Kane. Show me, all right? Show me. I want some frozen cup Kool-Aid type of sugar. I want all that sugar. Put something different in there. Let me see. You, Coach, you're talking about spring game. I'm with Chris. I need to see a few games with live action, with opponents, with people like MTSU who are hungry. You see what I'm saying, Coach? So I get it. We want something to hold on to. It's a new beginning. I'm with that. Y'all know I'm, I'm king to I D.I.E. But listen, y'all, let's just see how it goes. And, uh, Coach, man, keep doing what you're doing. And I'm going to try to come on tomorrow. That's a good topic you got going on tomorrow with Prime. So yeah, yeah. I'm trying to holler at you tomorrow. Everybody be well. Shout out Jay Blaze. What's going on? Um, Brother Jay Blaze. Hey, y'all don't know. Hey, shout out to Brother Jay Blaze. Let me just say this. Shout out to Brother Jay Blaze, who – uh, has been a public servant for, I believe, over 30 years. Mm -hmm. And I think the brother is retiring. I think this retired, July. Retired. Retired. He's done. 12. Yeah, I just and, talked and, to him. Oh, oh, okay. He's done. But, but yeah, but I just want to say, man, listen, I commend you, uh, Blaze. Man, you are a, a service man. We thank you. Our community thanks you. PG County thanks you. And, bro, uh, you gave me that, that information. I'm going to try to make it to that retirement, brother. So, man, I'm proud of you. Keep up the good work and take your time. They say, baby, you can do it. Take your time. Do, do it, it right. right. You, you can, can do, do it, it baby. baby. Do, do it, it tonight. tonight. <laughs> hey, I, I, I'm out. Coach, I'll let me later. <laughs> Don DeMarco, y'all give it up for Brother Jay Blaze has put is retired. Let's go, baby. <laughs> And if, for those that don't know, I guess I'll just put it out there. He put kind of put it out there. Brother Jay Blaze retired from the fire department. 
I'm not sure if it's D.C., Maryland area. But, man, shout out to that brother, man. We talked before on the phone. Man, my hat's off to you. We here. He said he's going to travel. Come hang out with us, man. Do what you got to do. But I always call Brother Jay Blaze the glue to the you. He has hooked me up. When I first started this, he reached out to me. He hooked me up with everybody pretty much. Hey, you need to talk to this dude. Coach, can you talk to this guy? Coach, do you mind if this guy talk to you? So big shout out to Brother Jay Blaze. He is the glue to the you. He makes sure all of these Miami Hurricane YouTubers stick together, do certain things. He didn't look, he didn't he didn't cause uh peace treaties and everything else, man. So shout out to you, brother Jay Blaze. We do appreciate you, man. We do love you, man. And thank you for all that you do. I know you had some tough times here in the past couple of years, man, with family. And we always got your back, bro, because you always have our back. And so, like I say, let's get it together. Hopefully you can make it to the spring game. If not, we make it to one of the first games and we'll definitely hang out. And maybe we might have a blaze. If you understand what I'm saying, we'll flight that thing up and set the whole town on fire because you know how to put it out, right? So with all that being said, I'm about to get out of here. I know the boys over there at uh, Miami Floor. I think they're doing a show tonight. I'm not sure. I know they do a little pre-preliminary thing or whatever. But with all that being said, thank you guys for everybody who hung out with us tonight. My cup looked like it runneth over. Look at that. All the donos in there. I appreciate it. So shout out to everybody who donated tonight. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to have a Coach Me Coach podcast. Tuesday, we're going to have one coming on. We're going to do a lot of good stuff, man. So big shout out to everybody else. Oh, hold on, Lenores. Hold on, Lenores. I'm also retired 20 years in the military, Marines, April 13, 2023. But you got to come on, man. We're going to celebrate you too, Lenores, man. So I appreciate you for your service and all that you do. And appreciate uh, Logan for all that he does and everything else. So with all that being said, thank you guys so much. Uh, and we're going to be up out of here. And Coach Hayes will catch you at the 50-yard line. And as always, go Canes.